We may take our seats. Let's clap hands for our praise team. We are encouraging them because they are indeed ministering to God through singing, through praising. And we are happy that we are able to sing in a manner that pleases God to whom we are singing. You know, that's something that many people are not aware of, that when we sing, we are not singing to entertain one another. If we want entertainment, we can play music in our homes. Whenever the church opens its mouth to praise, they are praising the King of Kings. For those who watch that, uh, that South African soap called Muvango, they know what Mulalo and Vangani does when they enter into the, the throne room of King Asgindini, the chief. They say a lot of praises to the king. You can speak to the king, you can't deal with the king without praising him. So I think we, we need to do some few things. First of all, we want to give our offerings. Let's take out our offerings and give into the offering baskets. Finance team, please assist us in this regard. And while we are giving our offerings, I want us to uh, welcome and acknowledge the overseas church. We know there are people with us in this Revelation gathering who are streaming live from various places around the world. Let's just wave our hands unto them. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Yes. Those that are in the United States of America, those that are in Canada, our beloved brethren that are in the UK, our brethren that are in South Africa, those that are in Russia, Germany. Uh, did I tell you that we now have believers in United Arab Emirates? Yes. Yes. And we are starting to make a plan right now. We are going there very soon. There are almost 30 people now we have believed the word there. If not more than 30, who are asking that we should go there and baptize them. It is amazing how the word of God is spreading. Yes. You know, one thing that I've always told people that I am close to, I tell them that if you have got a good product, you don't invest much money in advertising. A good product markets itself. Yes. Am I right? Yes. So you don't find a lot of advertising material from Jesus Revelation Ministries. We have never printed posters, by the way. Yes. We have never printed posters up to this afternoon. Yes. And how is the God, word of God spreading like wildfire in this manner? It is because of the product. We have got a genuine product. So the genuine product is sought after by many. Anybody whose desire is to find a true gospel, when they meet this message or these messages that we preach, they are going to identify with the message, and that's how we connect. So we thank God for entrusting us with such a, a, a treasure. Hallelujah. We thank God for entrusting us with such a treasure. We have been given a very amazing gospel. Let me rem remind you of what I said earlier on in the morning, that soon after our anniversary, our fifth anniversary, we are going to be uh, launching another series, which is called, what, do you remember? Yes. The Vessel Series. He has forgotten the other part. Brother Tyson, can you help him? Uh, vessels of God series. Vessels of God series. So uh, let's brace up for that message. It's coming. We can't preach it in this Revelation gathering because we don't have enough time. We've got a syllabus to pursue. Uh, 
I'm also, uh, I intend to give the media team a task. I want them to give us a WhatsApp number, a, a permanent WhatsApp number, which they can also put on our billboards there on the, on the, on the live streaming uh, page so that those who want to raise their questions or those that want to testify, we were doing testimonies just now, we want that if we are going to be having testimonies, those that are overseas, those that are not here, maybe they're in Zimbabwe, but because of other uh, activities, they are not able to attend the service, but they are attending on, on, on live streaming. We want them to be able to send their testimonies online so that when we share our testimonies, we also read those testimonies after those that are present in the service have given us their testimonies. So media team, this is a task starting from tomorrow. We want you to give us a permanent WhatsApp number that we will be using every time we are live streaming. We want feedback. There are others who may be wanting to give also so that they may minister to God who is ministering to them with the word of life. There are people who may say, we want to give, we want also for you to give those details on that page as well. If, as we are doing the live streaming, when we do offerings in the service, we want you also to give those that are not here present in the service to be able to give from wherever they are. We have, not, uh, we have no need uh, for us to deprive them of an opportunity to minister to God with their substance if God has ministered to their spirits through this word. So starting from tomorrow, we want those issues to be solved as well. Now, uh, we, I'm going to be preaching this message for two hours, exactly two hours. So at 18 past six, we'll be uh, done with this message. I'm not introducing the seventh seal. We are a great way off we want to dig it up. So today I'm going to do a summary of the six seals that we have dealt with. And the media team, by Sunday, I want you to have produced that disc with the sixth seal. The sixth seal message has never been produced. It was six hours long, so the normal CDs are not able to carry the, the size of the message. But there are DVDs that can accommodate uh, such a huge message or such a big message. We also want to put the 60 seal message on, on SoundCloud so that anybody who wants to follow the seven seals series may be able to uh, be a part of it. We have prayed the seven seals part one the seven seals part two, the seven seals part three, and then the seven seals part four. So seven seals part four is containing the sixth seal message. So this message we have, we are doing seven seals part five A, seven seals part five A, seven seals part five A. I don't know how many messages are going to be in part five. But that's what we need to do. So uh, give us Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. So what I'm doing is I want to dig it up, the seventh seal. But we can't get it in today's message. We can't get it in tomorrow morning's message. The seventh seal, probably we are going to get it tomorrow afternoon. But don't worry, we are going to pursue it probably up to Revelation chapter 9. We can't reach chapter 10 and chapter 11. We don't have the time. But when we end uh, Sunday, last Sunday, last message on Sunday, many people will be able to understand from Revelation chapter 10 going down to Revelation 22. Because the mysteries are between Revelation chapter 8 and chapter 9. Revelation chapter 7 is what I'm going to deal with tomorrow. It's a very good message. But maybe what I want to encourage you now is for you to go and read Revelation chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, 
in chapter 9. Those are the chapters that I'm going to be dealing much with in this Revelation gathering. So we are going to do a summary of the six seals in this message. Tomorrow, uh, in the morning message, let me look at my, the program that we have. Tomorrow afternoon, I am going to introduce Revelation chapter 7. That is the message that is going to prepare a ground for the seven this year. Baba Mafuja, do that there. But I see ya Loraka. We are going to get the seven this year on Sunday. Today I'm summarizing the six seals. Tomorrow I will prepare ground for the seven this year. On Sunday I will preach the seven this year. Do you remember that we preached the seven seals in 2015? So it's difficult now to just start by getting into Revelation 7 where we prepare the ground for the seven seals. Nobody can preach the seven seals without Revelation 7. He will be lying to you. The Re Revelation chapter 7 is a groundwork for the seven seals. Yes. The seven seals was touched in Revelation 8. But you can't preach the seven seals without Revelation 7. It's not possible. So tomorrow, we will touch Revelation 7. Groundwork for the 7th seal. And then on Sunday, we will touch the 7th seal. Now, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. Very important. The revelation belongs to Jesus Christ. Where did he get it from? God. Now, what happened after God gave this revelation to Jesus Christ? To, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So the reason why God gave Jesus Christ this revelation, it is because God wanted Jesus to show his servants the things that are going to happen shortly. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now, before we read verse number two, we are not going to read the rest of chapter one. We are just intending to understand the book of Revelation. By the way, it's not the book of Revelations. It's the book of Revelation. In Shona Ringadai Richin's Bukure Chaka Zarua, Arizi Bukure Chaka Zarua. Because if you look at the word Revelation there, it is without an S. Both in the title for the book and also in the beginning of the book. Chaka Zarua, Chai Jesu Christ. Chaka piwa na mangari. Kutago chira tiza varanda wake. Ndoku vaazo tumangirozi kuti ira tiza John. Now, and he sent and signified it. Let's all say it. It. The writer continues to emphasize that these are not revelations. If there were many revelations, my vurumoku, John would have said, and he sent and signified them, which meant that there are many revelations. The word it is a singular indicator. The revelation it. So, there's something that is very important there. Jesus Christ received the revelation and he, he owns the revelation. It, it, be, it belongs to him. But now, God wanted Jesus Christ to show his servants this revelation. God wanted Jesus to show his servants, to show many servants. Hallelujah. Amen. To show servants. But he sent and signified this revelation by his angel unto his servant John. What qualified John to receive this revelation was his identity in the body of Christ. He was his servant. So the reason why I am preaching to you this afternoon the message concerning the seals that are spoken of in the book of Revelation. 
It is because I am also a servant. John was not the final servant to receive this revelation. Remember, God gave Jesus Christ this revelation to show to servants. But in the book of Revelation, there is only the mentioning of one servant. Again, it is shown. Chaka Zaru and Echa Mangari. Chaka Piwa Jesu Christu na Mangari. Kuti Achira Tidze Kuwarandavake. Ndoku Vatu Mangiroz. Kuti Ira Tidze Joani Chaka Zaru wa Ichi. Shino Saka Inidi Pari Tidze Chaka Zaru wa Ichi. Shino Reva Kuti Pachaka Piwa Jesu na Mangari. Mangari Waka Nga Inye Listi Revarandava Aida Uri Chiko Zaru Iwa. But at the time ya Ganyar wa Revelation. Kwa 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 Zaru Iwa Wani Chedi. John is one of many servants to whom Jesus is expected to review this revelation. So I am one of the many servants. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Jesus wrote the Bible, or God wrote the Bible, it is the same thing, to talk about Jesus. Now, Remember, this is a revelation. It's not revelations. When I say the Lord has revealed something to me, I am not saying God is going to add my words into the Bible. No. The Bible is never going to be expanded to maybe more than 66 chapters. No. Whatever God reveals to me is never going to be a new revelation. It is just going to be another dimension of the same revelation. There is one revelation, but there are many dimensions into that revelation. Are you understanding this? Yes. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7, Apostle Paul says, that I may not boast on account of the abundance of revelations that was given unto me, that were given unto me by the Lord Jesus Christ. I was given a thorn in my flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me. Thrice I prayed unto the Lord concerning this matter, that it might depart from me. But the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for my strength manifest in weakness. So the revelations that Apostle Paul was referring to, he was not referring to multiplication of revelations that are mentioned in singular form in Revelation chapter 1. No. He was talking about dimensions of the same revelation. Yes. If you look closely at Revelation chapter 1 verse 1, you are going to see that the word revelation is in capital. It has got R in capital. Which means it's a proper noun. What it means is the moment somebody mentions the revelation, everybody must know what he's talking about. There are not going to be different places discussing different revelations. No, there is one revelation of Jesus Christ. But there are so many dimensions, there are so many facets, there are so many principles to this revelation. Are you hearing this? Yes. So the reason why John was mentioned in the Bible. God was not limiting the revelation to John. No. If John wanted to talk about this revelation given to him only, he would not have said to show unto his servants. He should have said to show unto his servant. Number one. Number two, John is not the one giving the revelation or revealing the revelation. He is a recipient. He is a beneficiary. He cannot determine who also receives the same revelation. John was a human being like myself. The difference between John and the other people in Israel was that John was called by grace unto Christ so that he may testify about him. The same happened to me. I am not different to John. I am not different to Peter. I am not different to Paul. I was separated for the gospel of Christ just like them. What is different rather between me and John is the time I am ministering, the time that I have been given the task to testify about Christ. John testified a long time ago 
to a different people, a different set of people all together. And the Lord has called me to testify about him at this time to witness his gospel unto you. So the difference both in time and the recipients or the beneficiary or those that are hearing the gospel does not change the revelation. If John was preaching to people who were midgets, the gospel does not change, the revelation does not change today because I have got taller people in the auditorium. No, the revelation does not change with the faces that are coming to attend to the gospel. I've got to make sure that we understand this. So when we read the book of Revelation from chapter 1 to chapter 22, let's not forget John received the revelation from an angel. That is very important. The Lord Jesus Christ did not show John this revelation. The revelation was showed by Jesus through the angel. Now, why did Jesus send an angel to reveal these revelations to John? One may wonder, did the Apostle Juenga read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, which says the angels desire to look into these things. Why then do we have an angel revealing this revelation to John if according to Peter, angels are not aware of the gospel? Don't forget, the angels did not show John the gospel. The angel showed John the, these things. The angels are a people or they are beings which may be given a parcel to carry, but they don't know what is carried or what is contained in the parcel. You are going to discover this, okay? Yes. Angels do not understand the gospel. Both angels are not beneficiaries of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Amen. They don't need Jesus dying for them at the cross of Calvary. So, it doesn't necessarily mean that today I must also come and tell you that a certain angel revealed certain things to me. No. This is something that happened to John by the sovereign will of Christ. Christ does not work with a specific pattern. He works in various ways, but for one objective, to reveal himself for the sake of his salvation gospel. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 4, a little bit, a little bit. Verse number 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be able after. So a door was opened, and the first, the first voice which he heard, John, is writing using the first person narrative technique. He heard a voice, it was talking to him like a voice of a trumpet. And the voice said to John, Come. Come up here. I will show you things which must be here after. Who is talking to John? Who is talking to John? The angel. Verse number two. And immediately I was in the spirit. Aha. Uh -huh. That is something that many people miss. I heard some uh, one members of the apostolic sect churches saying that he went to the mountain to pray to God that he should take him to heaven so that he may also see things like John did. John did not go to heaven. John, John was, he was, <laughs> he was connected to the Kairos environment. Remember in the morning service, in the morning sermon, I told you that heaven is not only a place, it is a dimension. Okay? Yes. So, John was in the spirit. What it means is, all right, <laughs> the microphone, who has got the mic? Give that first man the microphone. Let him tell us what he understands this scripture is saying. Immediately I was in the spirit. What does that mean? Agatanga Guns, Visa, Zunus, Siri, Kana, cannot Siri. Okay, that's what he understands. 
Bring the mic. I'll give Mama here the mic. Tell us, Mama, what you understand. Immediately, I was in the spirit. Tell us what it means. I think it means immediately his mental faculties were taken over by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Bring the mic here. Tete has got something very important to say. What do you understand? Immediately, I was in the spirit. Right. Give the mic anybody of your choice. There's a man close to you there. Uh, I think immediately he was in the Kairos environment. He's now speaking in, in the Hebrew language. <laughs> He's not speaking riddles and proverbs. <laughs> the words immediately I was in the spirit does not mean that previously he was in the body. No. There are two things that this phrase means. Immediately I was in the spirit. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you are a born again child of God, you must always walk in the spirit. Because Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17 says, walk in the spirit not according to the lust of the flesh. So John was walking in the spirit. His faculties of the body were already submerged by his sensitivity to the spiritual issues. The word spiritual simply means gospel-related matters. Because in Africa, if you say spiritual, people imagine somebody closing his eyes, having tears running down his, his face, and probably with some two guys running down out of his nose frowning his face like this. Area. Yakope. And they say, I'm now in the spirit. No. The word spiritual simply means gospel related. It also means an unphysical dimension. So, according to this understanding, you're going to see and immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven. And one set on the throne. Let's look at this scripture very well. John was invited to see what was happening in heaven. But he was not in heaven. He was given an ability to peep into heaven while he was here on earth. A door was opened not for him to enter heaven. Because the door that people are going to enter heaven through is Christ. Amen. Yes. There cannot be another door. Are we together? Amen. Yes. A door was opened. Immediately I was in the spirit, but a throne was set in heaven. Which means the throne was set in heaven, but he was not in heaven. He was in the spirit. What happened in heaven, the throne was set. What happened in the spirit? I was there. You get the distinction. John was in the spirit. He was given access into heaven. What God wanted John to experience was to record and to testify what he saw and not to participate in the events that are happening in heaven. You are going to see a lot of things, but this is a very important understanding. John went to heaven in terms of his, his participation in what was happening. He only participated by seeing, watching, and recording. He was not in heaven by way of going into heaven. He was in heaven like a person who has attended a movie show. You are in the movie house. The movie is run. At the back of the stage, the only thing that you see is the movie. You went to see the movie, but you are not part of the actors in the movie. So John was given a position from which he was going to see the things happening, but he was not participating in those events. His participation is in watching, seeing, hearing, and recording. Are, are we together there? Yes. Okay, fine. 
What happened? A throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Verse number three. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. He's describing the throne and one that sits on the throne. And let's not forget the word one. One that sat on the throne. <laughs> so I want to explain to you why the revelation was given to John through the angel and not through Jesus Christ. Because when Jesus Christ was ascended to heaven after he rose from the dead, John could not see him in the body again. Remember, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we no longer know Christ after the flesh. Isn't that right? We no longer know Christ after the flesh. So, Christ is going to be participating in what John is going to see. So, he cannot be showing John while he's also participating in those events. What is happening in, the, in heaven is like a screen from where the people are watching the movie. The movie is projected onto a screen, and John is watching that movie. He can't change the events that are happening. One of the characters in that movie is the owner of the movie house. Are you hearing this? Yes. Jesus, the owner of the New Testament, from where John is seeing this, this revelation, is also the one that is seated on the throne. So, the reason why the angel was sent, it was because God wanted the people of the earth to understand something very important. I'm going to say it, and I'm going to say it once, I'm going to say it again, I'm going to say it again in another message. But I will continue to say this, and I've been saying this for some, some time now. But I know it has not stuck into your, into your spirits and into your hearts uh, enough. It is not just settled in you enough. When you go to heaven, you are not going to find God the Father and Jesus Christ seated on the right hand. Like here, I'm on her right hand. Ah, I'm on her left, and she is on, on her right. So people assume that Jesus is seated on the right hand of God. That what it means is when we go to heaven, we are going to say, How are you, God the Father? How are you, Jesus Christ the Son? There's nothing like that in heaven. I will continue to say this. Jesus Christ is not the Son of God according to the Kairos understanding. God was in heaven. He wanted to save men. And he knew that men cannot be saved from heaven. The salvation project was going to be played out on earth. So for God to come and play out the salvation plan on earth, he couldn't come with his physique, with his stature, which he has when he is in heaven. Remember we said the Kairos environment is the one that created the Kronos environment. The Kronos environment is carried by the Kairos environment. But the Kairos environment cannot carry the Kronos. The Kronos environment cannot carry the Kairos environment. So in order for God who lives in the Kairos environment to come into the Kronos environment, he knew that it's like a drum that wants to get into a cup. Do you understand this? Yes. The cup can get into a drum, but the drum cannot get into a cup. Now, this is God, and this is the earth. This is Kairos environment. This is Kronos environment. The Kairos, the Kronos environment, the earth, the universe, and the planets, they are not in the Kairos environment. They are outside the Kairos environment but they operate under instructions from the Kairos environment, the Kronos environment. The Kronos environment is outside the Kairos environment. So God is the one who, who, who designed the Kronos environment, but he doesn't live in it. He lives in the Kairos environment. So he wanted to come into this Kronos environment, but he knew that his size now is too big. He can't come into the Kronos environment. So what he did now, he split himself, or rather, he downsized himself. 
Okay? Yes. So he said, when I go into the earth, I'm going to go there as my son. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> I go into the earth and I will tell them that my father is in heaven. They will never know that I am the father until I reveal it unto them so that I may fit into the smaller Kronos environment. And people will be able to carry me and put me on the cross. And I will be able to die. As I am in my environment, I don't die. Death is not even something that happens to people like me. I don't die. Amen. How can I die if death is also my creature? <laughs> you are going to learn about that as we mature in the word. Death is actually a creature. When it comes before God, it says, Igwe. Death bows down to God. So God cannot die. Are you getting this? Yes. So God downsized himself and he called himself the son of God. That's why when you read 1 Corinthians, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of the angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Who was received into glory? God. Was it the Son of God? So if God was received in heaven, who received him? He received himself. It doesn't make sense. Who told you the gospel makes sense? <laughs> Are you not in the wrong place? You must be attending a philosophy class or something. If you want something that makes sense. The gospel doesn't make sense. It makes faith. Yes. <laughs> so we are not coming, not, not coming here to give people something sensible, no? We are simply presenting God as he is. Those that are written in the book of life, they will believe him like that. So let's understand that. When John saw heaven, he was never going to see Jesus there. Now, we're going to talk about scriptures where he saw the lamb and so forth. Don't worry. But he saw one seated on his throne. Which means there are not two people on the throne. There are not two thrones. There is one throne and there is one seated on the throne. If Jesus is not seated on the throne, it means he is not exalted. He, somebody says, no, Jesus is not on the throne. He is on a bench. There is no mentioning of any bench in the scriptures. You are deluded. So when he went up to heaven, people are expecting to go to heaven to see Jesus Christ and to thank him for dying for them and to also thank God for sending the son. Because Jesus said, for God so loved the world, he said for the son. So people are thinking that there is a son and a father. The father said to the son, go and die for the people. That's what we preach and we are correct. But when Jesus, when, when he comes to judge the world, we will be wrong. From that moment, he comes as the judge. He will not be talking about the son of God again. The issue of the son of God only happens until the expiration of the ministry of the New Testament. We are allowed to say Jesus is the son of God in the New Testament. Because when he converted himself, he converted himself for us. That we may, through that platform he created, which is called Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We may go to him. So he, see, he was on his throne. Who wants to sit on his throne? Come and sit. Come, bring your throne. Do you want me to make a throne for you? <laughs> now, stand up. So you see, God was seated on his throne. And he wanted people to come to him. But he knew that there was no way for people to come to him. So he wanted to make a way. So he converted himself. And he said, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to humble myself to the dust. And I'm going to appear to them as my son. So he says to the people, no one comes to the father but by me. 
So he stands in the midst of the road and says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Who is talking here? This is God in the dimension of the Son of God. Yes. So he now sits back on his throne after he has concluded the message. He is no longer on the road. He has laid down the gospel of what he did at Calvary. And he says, if you are coming to me, come through Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? It is me. Yes. Who has aged a plan to save mankind? Rodi amuru kuti Jesus ndi nzira kuna nzira Jesus ndi nzira. Dimunga hari wamuru kuti Jesus. Dimunga hara kashini ni pisa akashita muranda kutapone sevan. Apeza ukazira Rodi ironzi iye. No faka rafuti pashikar. Akatuye nje Rodi ya moya udeng. Bati muka wya michele sako na baba ni muana mo zingwa foot akuna baba ni muana kuno. If you don't understand this mystery, you will not go to heaven. So when we finally see God on the throne, we are going to say, Abdara, we have understood it. You came on earth disguising yourself as your son. And everybody on earth, they, they say there is God the Father and God the Son. But we know there are no two people. It is you. When you come in the body, you call yourself son of God. Yes. Says Aga Gara, don't pouch our out there, Gary, the dick. Uka, Fauci Fugo, Jano, Namana, Kumana, Denga, the Rombo, and out of the Gabi Rakos, Ganaga, which I want to go on a Denga, Avana Bonamana Koman. Ah, John Naka, one of whom I did a Zimana Kumana, I should not see Capaz Boyagi, Cotibari Garza Capaz Boyagi. God was received up into glory. Are you forgetting? God manifested in the flesh. God was preached in the word. God was received up into glory. It was God who was received, not the Son of God. Who was manifest in the flesh? God, not the Son of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, this is very important. Take your seats. Thank you very much. Let's go to verse number 4, Revelation chapter 4. In the round about the throne were 4 and 20 seats. And upon the seats, I saw 4 and 20 elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Verse 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Mm -hmm. So, there comes the issue of the Holy Trinity. They say there is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. These three, they are in heaven. The seven spirits according to Revelation chapter 4. They are not God sitting by the side of the God of heaven. No, they are called the seven spirits of God. Which means the seven spirits are owned by God. In other words, the dimension of God in the Holy Spirit. The number seven there is a number of perfection. Doesn't mean that there are seven spirits, no. There is one perfect spirit of God. Do you get it now? Yes. Verse number six. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes bef before and behind. So the, the rest of Revelation chapter four, it talks about what John saw. The setup that is there in heaven. I was in the spirit and I saw. And he begins to record what he saw. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 5. Don't worry. We, we want to settle up the six seals and then we prepare ourselves for Revelation chapter 7 that lays the ground for the seventh seal. <laughs> Revelation chapter 5 and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, 
him that sat on the throne. Somebody says, the Christians say, God the Father. They should tell us who is God the Mother. So I did not respond because I'm not a Christian. <laughs> if they wanted me to answer, they were going to ask me in my capacity as a child of God, as a believer. Christianity is not what Jesus died for. Christianity is a religion that was set by humanity to run parallel with the kingdom that Jesus died to set up. There was no Christian at Galatia. There was no Christian at Antioch. There was no Christian at Philip. There was no Christian at Caesarea Philippi. Okay. You saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back side, sealed with the seven seals. So we need to understand something, Pastor Baloy. That John was not there, but he was there. <laughs> you can't. Uri kwa movie. But kwa You can't change the script of the movie. That's what happened to John. He saw things that he had no control or influence over. He just watched like somebody watching a movie in a movie house. Remember, he was there, but he was not there. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, and this year, I don't know how I can get seven seals this afternoon. Come. Who wants to help? Pastor Rengi, come. This is the second seal. This is the third seal. Do it, start afresh. We want the seven seals, all of them. I want to show you how the seven seals were sealing the book so that we may appreciate what happened. Seal number one. Seal number two. Seal number three. Seal number four. It's still like one seal. One more seal to go. The red one. It's a dangerous one. <laughs> seal number five. Seal number six. Seal number seven. Now, this is what was happening. <laughs> These are the seals. The word seal means two things. Number one, it means you are not allowed to see what is inside. Okay? Yes. <laughs> number two, a seal means if you are going to see what is inside, you need authority from the one who has placed the seal. It's like somebody has locked his wardrobe. If you want to open it, you've got to ask for permission. If he says, yes, you can wear my T-shirt, then they will give you the keys to open the door of the wardrobe, and then you are able to pick up the T-shirt that you are borrowing. So the seals are talking about an authorized access to the word of God. Number two, it also tells us how important the word of God is to the owner. 
So who wants to help me with this? Who wants to hold on? Come, hold on the sealed book. And I saw in the right hand, in the right hand, of him that sat on the throne. Now it's important for you to know who had the book. For well, somebody's going to tell you that he also has the book. You have got to know who was in possession of this book. And I saw in the right hand of him, it was God seated on the throne. A book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. Now, I've got a question to John. How did he know that the book was written within and on the back side if it was sealed like this? Pana now turn John. John, we remember a post to Latinga Guti Kwana. But to the Congo Ziva Guti, we saw by a John. Bugura Varwa, Nezisimbi so she no me. Titsananguri, the Gutuaka Ziva say, Kutiraganyor wa Kun Zenem Gat. This is what the Lord wanted him to write. It was in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Now, before we go any further, I've lost my Bible. Can I borrow yours? Before we go any further, let's go to the book of Daniel. We want to talk about the seals because they were also mentioned in the book of Daniel. Okay. Revelation, Daniel chapter 12, from verse number 7. Let's start from verse number 5. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the, of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. Yes. And one said to, to the man clothed in, in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the whole people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understand not. Read again verse 8. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So Daniel was given visions. But he says in verse number uh, 8, I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? What shall be the end of these things? <laughs> what was the answer? Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. In other words, go away. Robert the revelation or the understanding of these things, they are not for your generation. They are for the end times generation. And we are the end times generation. The generation that is just before the dawn of the last appearance of Jesus as the judge of the earth to collect his own, take them into the heavenly sanctuary. So, let's go back to verse number 8 of Daniel chapter 12. Because we need to understand what the seals are 
before we go into seal number one, seal number two, seal number three, seal number four, seal number five, and seal number six, then we are done. I heard, but I understood not. Then I said, oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? How many of us in this world today, how many of us in Harare, how many of you that are watching this service right now are in the Daniel dilemma? You are hearing scriptures opened by the men of God day in, day out in the services, but you don't understand. The man of God himself doesn't even understand what he's reading. Daniel was a man of God, but he confessed, I don't understand. If we had the Daniel kind of a pastor, we would have lesser problems in the church. A pastor who tells you, when you ask him a question concerning a verse, he tells you, I have heard your verse, I don't understand it. Do we have that kind of a pastor today? No. Our pastors know that know it all. But what they say after the verses are read, they are diametrically distanced from what God meant in those verses. Now, I will continue to say this as I've said it again, over and over again. God does not have a problem with the Tsikamtanda, the Zimbabwean uh, magician to buy his copy of the Bible. God doesn't have a problem with President Mnangagwa taking an oath of office using the Bible. No. Because he knows that having the Bible is not equal to having the word of God. Amen. No. You can have several versions of the Bible, but not have the word of God. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. So, today I want to show you something that I didn't say when I taught the seven souls in the first round. As we look at the Bible today, do we see these seals? We don't. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do something that I didn't do in the first message. But I want to do it later so that we may deal with the seals literally as John saw it. The seals that John saw were physical, even though they were in the book that was held by one that sat on the throne in the Kairos environment. But he saw a book, a true, a physical book with physical seals. But that was a vision which needed interpretation. <laughs> so what we have from John today in the book of Revelation, we have writings of the visions that were given to John concerning the revelation of Christ. We don't have a revelation of that revelation. The vision needs to be understood. The vision needs to be elaborated. The vision needs to be simplified. The vision needs to be decrypted. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Vision yakaligwa. He saw one that sat on the throne. He saw crowns of gold that were on the heads of the 24 elders. If you don't understand that it's a vision, you are going to make a drawing of 24 men with the crowns of God on their, on their heads. Who told you the 24 elders were human beings? Who told you that? Does the word elder mean human being? <laughs> Ask your neighbor, does the word elder mean human being? Are there no elders among elephants? Are there no elders among angels? What are seraphims and cherubims? Are they not elderly angels? The word elder in the Bible does not mean mature or an aging man. No. The word elder in the Bible means senior. Seniora. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, the elders are not human beings. The elders are not human they are heavenly beings that are seated on the right, on the, around the throne of God. That are 
seated around the throne of God. So the golden crowns are not physical gold. No, those are similes and metaphors. They will need to be explained on another date. Don't make your crown of gold trying to copy the golden crowns that the 24 elders were wearing. No. These are visions, okay? Yes. Remember, John saw a vision of the revelation. He never had the time to explain the vision. It was not his duty to explain the vision. Amen. The duty was for the Laodicean church age. Amen. The vision was for the last church age to be given an understanding of that vision. Are you forgetting Daniel chapter 12, verse number 8 and 9? Amen. Amen. Vision in Daniel. I understood do not. Then said I, oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Verse 9, together go. And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the ways are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Till when? The time of the end. Which is, what is the time of the end? This is the time of the end. Are we hearing? Yes. So we are going to take off these seals later so that we may deal with the Bible, with the seals that are there in the Bible. The seven seals. <laughs> The seven seals are here. They are not physical like these ones. This is just a vision. So we are going to deal with the vision. And I'm going to deal with the reality of the vision. What are the seven seals? John saw physical barriers to the book. The word seal means barrier. The word seal also means Barrier with no possibility of leakage. <laughs> Can I repeat myself? The word seal means barrier that is so tight, so tenaciously applied that nothing skips through the barrier. No. Nothing slips through the barrier. If it is a seal on the hydraulic cables of a car, no hydraulic oil will leak through that seal. If it is a seal on the pneumatic cables of a car, no air shall pass through that seal. The word seal means closed with no possibility to peep into what is sealed. Zero ability to see what is inside. Seven is a number of perfection which means God has perfectly sealed the book so that there is no possibility for somebody by chance in Jonathan not his name Masanga. What is another word in Jonathan? Kujuma. Ah, Apostle Wajuma. Kujuma. Kujuma. I'm a levels. You can go jump. Got it. Tell me, you can go as well. I can go jump. Pachizaruk. So before we go any further with chapter five of Revelation, we are not going to talk about chapter five. The seals are in chapter six. We are only dealing with chapter five so that we may understand how the seals were applied. Now, seal means no unauthorized access. Seal means what has been closed inside, what has been locked inside is so important to the owner that he doesn't want anybody unauthorized to have unauthorized access into. So he talks about the value of what is sealed inside. He talks about authority required to be, to be, to be uh, acquired also, authority to be acquired so that one may find access into what is locked inside. If your father is a safe in the house and has got his watches in the safe, his wallets in the safe, probably when he gets home with his car, he puts his car keys into the safe. There are a lot of things that it means. First, 
It means everything that is in the safe is so important to your father, unlike the cup that is in the kitchen. It is, his, it is your father's cup, but it doesn't have much value to it, to the extent that he doesn't put the cup into the safe. But the car keys are important, so he doesn't want anybody to drive his car. That's why he locks the car keys into the safe. The reason why he has locked the car keys in the safe it is because he doesn't want anybody to drive his car without his express authority. Okay? Yes. Number three, if the safe is sealed, locking a safe and sealing a safe are two different things. Okay? Yes. Locking a safe and sealing a safe are two different things. Locking simply means I have denied everyone access into the safe. But if this, the lock is sealed, it's like an envelope that, that, that has been uh, closed. There is a special glue that they use to close the envelope. And by sealing the envelope, you put a tape on the envelope. You, you mark with your pen, like the right zigzags on the envelope to make sure that if anybody tries to open the envelope, the recipient of the envelope will say, somebody open this envelope, you are going to go to jail. In most cases, they put a red sticker, which means agent, strictly uh, to be opened by the address C, private and confidential. Some will write extremely private and extremely confidential. So the envelope has not only been closed, but it has also been sealed. No possibility of seeing what is in the envelope. If it is closed, you can open it tactfully, read it, and close it again. But if it is sealed, you can't open it. You go to jail. Are you hearing this? Yes. So there's no possibility of one reading into the Bible. Because the Bible was sealed. The book was sealed. The book is the Bible. So God has no problem with you buying your copy of the Bible. He knows you are going to find yourself in the Daniel dilemma. I heard it, but I understood it not. He thought the angel was going to say, let me tell you what it means. The angel says, go your way. <laughs> what did the angel say? Go, go your way. Ruapazi. Shama ruwaka bata vesi so. Uri mu prayer. Wichi baba chanka mire. Don't zaru di dai. Vesi kutino tukudi. Mutekwa tekwa da pot. Onzi kwa uchinzi. Ruapazi. What Daniel chapter 12 verse 9 tells us is that the seals are not going to be removed on request. You need to write that. Daniel applied for the seals to be removed. His application was turned down. The response was go your way. You don't ask God to give you revelation. No. We are going to prove that with the scripture very soon. But you need to write that down. You don't ask God to give you revelation. Pastor, you can take a seat. Take your chair and bring it here. We are going to preach together this afternoon. Now, let's, let's go to... Revelation chapter 5, verse number 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Tell your neighbor, are you as strong as this angel? If John tells you that the angel was strong, believe him, he was not lying. I don't know how he measured the strength of the angel. But I want you to understand, the angel was... Yarindiba. Rarindiba. Rarindiba. Squish, squish, Now, the book was in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. It was written within and on the back side. 
it was sealed with the seven seals. Mm -hmm. But what happened in verse number two? And I, I saw a strong. Give us verse number one a little bit. Verse number one of chapter five. Sealed with the seven seals. Tightly sealed. No possibility of looking into the book. Now, in verse number two, what does he say? I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. You are going to assume that the angel is going to say, since I am strong, I will open the seals. Listen how and why the angel was strong. He was strong to proclaim with a loud voice. <laughs> <laughs> now we are, we are driving slowly to our message listen let's read verse number 2 together go and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals there that is why he was strong he was only strong to ask around who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. Who? Pastor Jay says, the way we are going to visit the seals, in the Awaka Simba, so. Huh? Simba, so who did it? And you know what? The way the angel, remember, we preached a message titled Minister of Angels. The, the way the angel is multidimensional. There is a time when the word angel in the Bible refers to Christ. Because the word angel in the Bible, in the Hebrew terminology, it means messenger. It rather means servant given an assignment to perform by the master. And according to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 12, Jesus took the form of a servant, right? Yes. So the word angel you have to be careful, especially in the Old Testament scriptures. There are many angels which came to paint a picture of Christ. Okay? Yes. To paint a picture of Christ. I'll give you two examples. The first example of the angel that was brought into this world by God to paint a picture of Christ is the angel that appeared to Manoah's wife in Judges 13. The angel came to tell Manoah's wife that she was going to conceive and bear a son and how they were to raise that son. The same way the Lord spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 18 verse 10. Where is Sarah thy wife? That was Jesus speaking to Abraham. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, in the tent. And the Bible says, The Lord said, I shall surely return unto thee next year by this time according to the time of life and Sarah thy wife shall conceive and bear thee a son the angel came to tell Manoah's wife that she shall conceive and bear a son the same way Jesus spoke to Abraham and in Genesis chapter 21 verse 1 the Bible says the Lord did unto Sarah as he had promised and Sarah conceived, and Isaac was born. How does Jesus give a prophecy of the birth of Isaac? He was talking about his own birth. So Jesus talk, uh, talked to Abraham about his own birth, but in Abraham's mind, he thought that Jesus was talking about the birth of Isaac. But we all know, according to Galatians 3, verse 16, that Isaac was a type of Christ. You understand these dynamics now. You go to Luke chapter 1 and Luke chapter 2. Angel Gabriel came to speak to Zachariah, performing the priestly duty according to his allocation in the Holy Temple. And he was told of the birth of John the Baptist. And the angel, the same angel, appeared to Mary also and spoke about the birth of Jesus. That angel that spoke to Zachariah, the priest of the order of Levi, was also a type of Christ. The barrenness of Zechariah and Elizabeth was a type and shadow of the barrenness of the Old Testament. 
Are you hearing me? Yes. The Old Testament was unable to bear a son called righteousness. Are you hearing this? Yes. So the old age of Zachariah and Elizabeth speaks about the time that righteousness was born in the person of Christ. Jesus was born at a time when the old covenant was too old to continue to live. That's why Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13 says, in that he says the New Testament, he has made the, old, the, the, the first one old, and what is old is ready to vanish away, ready to perish. Paano the New Testament, waka sakadza yekutanga. Sinoka na chinicha sakara, chava chekare, shoda kuro. Saka panonzi na sakara, tuno kuita mwana tashempira say, it testimony Old Testament, ta sakara ta akuda kurova. Jesa no gozarwa, say, pakati pedu. Yes. But who was the angel? That was Christ talking about his own coming. According to the spirit of Christ that was in them. Are you understanding? Yes. So there is also another time when angels are used to talk about preachers of the gospel. There is a shadow. There is a lot of instances in the Bible where angels are used to paint a picture of how the minister of the gospel is going to conduct himself. And then the angels are also going to be performing their duties in their positions as angels. So angels appear in multi dimensions. Number one, they may come as angels representing themselves. Servants on a mission according to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 12 to 13. Another time angels come to paint a picture of Christ. There is another appearance of angels that is going to be shedding a picture of the minister of the gospel. Now in Revelation chapter 5 verse number 2, this strong angel was also multidimensional. The first dimension, it was representing itself. In the other dimension, it is also speaking about other men of God of our time. Too strong. But when they open their mouths, they prove that they don't have a book that has the seals removed from it. Message who is able to open the, the seven seals? Ano kwanza uvurandiana. Kana jipari zaji karara kushikira uro ya tsemuke. Unga tano ziva shakanyi rombebe. Aka fanana danyiri. I heard and I understood not. Somebody, some pastor was asked by a congregant a question. Pastor, there is a question in the Bible. You say that Jesus uh, is God. But Jesus prayed to God. In the Bible says he prayed and said these words. So who was he praying to? Then the pastor said, uh, my son, he was a spiritual father, by the way. Very strong. The pastor said, my son, I want you to understand this. Not everything in the Bible is for our consumption. Certain scriptures are not to be preached here on earth. When God is in heaven, he also does Bible studies with his son. So don't bring questions that are for God and Jesus in heaven to me. Bring me scriptures that are to be discussed here on earth. Like John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world. And what they do is the pano. Ya wabata yi de darere kudenga. Roda wana damreta na na piyo. Uno mita se pasa kanada. Kuti jeso na mwari. Vari tu wanzi wano pari zirani. Saka baibi raga zoka roti pisampa za mwari zaka waya kuno. Kwee mwari ka naine zampa zake zaru fanyira wonga jita wana kudenga. Zaka waya sei kuno. No Mwemfunza. <laughs> A very strong man, man of God. 
But when he opens his mouth, he doesn't have, he, does, he can't open the book. Now let's, let's go forward with our message. Now look at Revelation chapter 5, verse number 2. I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Very strong, very loud. Have you ever met such a man of God? Very strong, very loud. But when he preaches, he can't open the book, he can't lose the seals. Mm -hmm. So, because of time, I want you to go to Daniel chapter 5 on your own in your spare time. When you read Daniel chapter 5, Baba Mafuta, you are going to come across something. Let's, let's read verse number, verse number 5. Daniel in, chapter 5, verse number 5. In the same hour came forth fingers of, of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's place. Palace, palace. Palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that he wrote. Yes. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another. The king cried aloud to bring in the, ast the astrologers. Bring the, every pastor. The Chaldeans. Bring every spiritual father. And the soothsayers. Bring everyone who has got spiritual spectacles. And the king spake and, and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with the scarlet and, if, and have a chain of God about his Whosoever neck. Whosoever shall read the writing and show me the interpretation. How many things was the king asking for? Two things. The king wanted somebody to read what was on the wall. Hallelujah. Amen. You wouldn't read the writing, neither would you be able to interpret. Now, so the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, they were brought by the king. You all say, God sent you, right? You are a man of God. You, you, you are big from Nigeria, big from Israel. What about you? Big from Uganda. Okay, fine. You, big from Epoet. Okay, fine. Come here. <laughs> this is the end writing. If you are begging from Ghana, read the writing. If you are begging from Israel, read the writing. After reading, interpret. What, was, what happened later? Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Yes. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Thank you. Now, what happened in verse number 10? Now the queen, by reason ah, okay, of... it's fine. It's okay. Go to Daniel chapter 2. I will not read this one. The king had a dream, Baba Mzimba. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. But there happened a problem. He forgot the dream. Mambo Nebuchadnezzar. Waka rota, dovo wafuma, ito opese zaruta zaka oma. Patinda kanga anwa. I want somebody to tell me of that dream. Bring all the pastors. <laughs> and the magicians told the king, this thing has never happened. There is no man who has ever had a dream and forgotten it and asked the pastors and the prophets to tell him the dream that he has forgotten and its interpretation. Only the God who, who does not dwell among men can do that. Now, these are scriptures, three of them. Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 5, and Revelation chapter 5, verse number 2. Go back to verse number 2, Daniel, Revelation chapter 5. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. So you are not only required to open the book, you are required to do thing, two things. Loose the seals. This scripture was not written in chronological order. There is no way you can open the book and loose the seals. You have got to loose the seals first 
and open the book. Okay? Yes. But it was not a mistake. Because like I said, the seals are not physical. The seals are not physical. The seals are inside the Bible. So we are talking about the vision that John saw. You see what I'm talking about? So in chapter 5 of Daniel, there was an end writing. Belshazzar said, bring all the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans. Let them read the end writing and interpret. In Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar said, he forgot it. <laughs> he said, come and tell me what I have dreamt and give me the interpretation of the dream. The magician said, no, this has never happened. If you have forgotten the dream, forget about the dream. <laughs> dream another one. Tell us your dream, we will interpret. The king said, if I tell you the dream, you give me a false interpretation. For me to know that your interpretation is true, tell me the dream first. <laughs> the, the magician said, we can't, it's not possible. He said, I will kill you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Go and read Daniel chapter 2. What did he say? He said, I will kill you. If by tomorrow you don't give me the interpretation and the dream, all of you, no man of God will be in this country by end of day tomorrow. <laughs> the, all the false pastors were in trouble. Those days it was going to be difficult for you to say men of God. I'm sure in those days, everyone who wanted to say men of God, he, he started to say, I was joking, I was joking. <laughs> Because Nebuchadnezzar was a serious man. If he says he kills you, he would kill you. Ah, but afraid he. Why you tell my jokes? He never had a number of friends. I got to In the gang, coach, in the name of speech, was spectacles. That's what I'm saying. But Nebuchadnezzar, if such a pair, we in a discipline, we are. But why was I thinking such a good thing? The man of God. Why you come with him? No more. I take you to him. Listen to verse number five of Daniel 2. The king answered and said, give us verse number three first. Then speak, I start from verse number one. We need it. And in the second year of the reign of yes, Nebuchadnezzar. Yes, in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, yes. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. He lost his sleep the moment he had the dream. He couldn't sleep. Yes. Then the king commanded to call the magicians <laughs> and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans. If you are a prophet in, in the Babylon, you were assured that one day you were going to be called to the palace. For and it was not for good we met us. It was a spiritual. <laughs> Ah, so don't make a to get to Texas with the airtime. So my church is not what I say. Ah, we want to make a deal again. We want to make a deal again. Can you buy in dog? Can you talk about the unjukwa? Go, 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 go. Come on, come on. Can you buy a car? 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 Can Now, what happened? For to show the king his dreams. Yeah. So they came and stood before the king. The king simply said, come. So they never knew what they were invited for. They stood before the king. I, I, I'm imagining the apostles for Joan Marang with their long sticks. They come go to chimba, Jehovah, Gava Kurire. Ah. Nebuchadnezzar, 
Now, they stood before the king. What happened? And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Yes. Then spake the children to the king in Syriac, Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servant the dream, and we will show the interpretation. <laughs> Tell us what you have dreamt of. It's interpretation. Very easy. Yes. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. I forgot it. <laughs> yes. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, you shall be cut in pieces, <laughs> and your houses shall be made a dung hill. Don't <laughs> Sakaone <laughs> Now listen to verse 6 what the magicians said in response to what Nebuchadnezzar was demanding from them. Tell but, me my dream and then interpret. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. Yes. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation <laughs> of it. Yes. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that you would gain the time, because you see the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me. <laughs> to you see what he's saying now? You conspired to lie to me. That's why you want me to tell you the dream. And you give me a false interpretation. I now see what you wanted to do. The good thing that has happened this time, I forgot the dream. Yes. Till the time be changed, therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. Yes. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. <laughs> Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asketh such things at any mag 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 magician or astrologer or Chaldean. So the Chaldeans said, Never in the history of mankind. Has there been any, any person who is able to tell somebody what he has dreamed? It has never happened before. Neither has, there, has it ever happened that when a person forgets his dream, he, money, he, he, he forces the astrologers, the magicians, the judges to tell them what he has dreamed. It has never happened. They thought the king would say, since I, no request like this has ever been made, go home. The king said, I will call you tomorrow and I will kill you. So that is when Daniel came and said to the king, I hear that you want to kill these magicians because they can't tell you of your forgotten dream. The king said yes. Daniel said, allow me to go and pray with my friends. I will come back and tell you of this matter. It's a small matter. God will deal with it. So Daniel came and told the king about the dream. And then after that, Daniel also interpreted the dream. And do you know that the dream was about his fall, his downfall? 
The dream was about Nebuchadnezzar's downfall. If he was wise, he should have forgotten about the dream. God is going to destroy your kingdom, O king. That was the interpretation of the dream. But look at me. We are laughing over this matter. But it's good for us to learn in an environment where we are able to laugh. That way, we can relate with the message more. Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 5, Revelation chapter 5, verse 2. There are two things that are required. You are not only required to interpret the handwriting on the wall, but much rather you are required to interpret after reading. So in chapter 5, verse 2 of Revelation, the strong angel shouted with a loud voice, Who is able to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Two things. Now, you are going to find out that most mistakes that are made in preaching in today's world, they are not emanating from a failure to understand the interpretation of the biblical scriptures. No. Most false messages are emanating from in, an inability to read the verse itself. I'll prove that to you with the three scriptures. Charles Charamba sang a song. Ano simu zamaro bam guruva. Ano simu zamaro bam guruva ka. Kuita kwa ke Jehovah. Charles Charamba's message is not only wrong in terms of his interpretation. No, it is mostly wrong because he failed to read the scripture. The scripture does not say God lifts up uh, the beggar from the dust. No. In English, it simply means God lifts up the beggar from the dust. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2, this was Hannah. She was praying to God, thanking God for the Samuel child that God gave him after a long time of barrenness. So let's just hear what Hannah said in her prayer in verse number 8. He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill. In English it says he lifts up the beggar from the dust. But that is not what the scripture says. No. Read it carefully. The poor is the one that is raised from the dust. The beggar is raised from the dunghill. In Shona, the Bible should have said, Ano simu zamurombo kuva muguruwa. O simu zamarombe kuva paduru nuru. Saka paakati ano simu zamarombo kuva muguruwa. Aka pesa nisafesi. Ano simu zwa kuva muguruwa. Murombo, kwete varombe, marombe. Charamba haka imba ano simu zamarombe. Ano simu zamarombe kuva muguru vaka. Ano simu zamarombe kuva muguru vaka. Vesi hili kuta ano simu zamurombo kuva muguru vaka. O simu zamarombe. Anjitika? Yes. Kuva pai paduru nuru. Saka Charles Charamba failed to read. How can he get the interpretation right if he failed to read? His problem was not in his interpretation. That is a secondary problem. His primary problem was in the reading of the scripture. Ah, Murombe ne Murombe ne Marombe shaka fana. Says who? Kana shaka fana na paga nyoro. Ewe se marwa viri. Paga di paga onzano simu zamarombe ne Marombe ne Maru ne Marombe ne Marombe. Kupamu guru wa nimduru. Do manjuru wenga de ya kete wade shaka fana. Ano simu za warombo ni marombe kufamu guruwa ni mduru nuru. Kana shaka fanana. 
Kanapakanzi he raised up the poor out of the dust and he lifted up the beggar from the dungeon. That means there is a, de a demarcation between the poor and the beggar. Are you hearing? Yes. The poor was Christ. Yes. According to Proverbs chapter 9. Proverbs chapter 9. The poor that was raised out of the dust is Christ, not us. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. There is this wisdom that I saw. <clears throat> Give us verse number 16. Let me verify that scripture. It's what? Proverbs chapter 6. Ah, it's, it's Ecclesiastes. Give us Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 13, yes. It's not Proverbs. This wisdom have I seen also under it's the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 13. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun. And it seemed great unto me. What wisdom was great unto you? There was a little city. There was a little city called and, the earth. And few men within it. Very few people are on earth compared to the multitude, innumerable company of angels that are in heaven. And there came a great king against it. Devil came against planet earth. And besieged it. And he be besieged earth. And built great bulwarks against it. He built a, a great bulwark of sin against the earth. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. A poor wise man was Christ. And he, by his wisdom, deliver, delivered the city. Now you can go to Matthew chapter 11, verse 18. I want you to see that he delivered this city by his wisdom. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he is a devil. Verse 19, the son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous, and a wine biber, and a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Clap hands for Jesus. Yes. Another scripture that tells us that Jesus Christ and his gospel are the wisdom of God is First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 24. Christ is the power of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. Okay? Yes. So, finish Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Give us verse number 15. Have you found it? Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city, Yet no man remembered the same poor man. Verse 16, then I said, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. The poor wise man is Jesus Christ. Yes. He was raised from the dust. It was after rising from the dead. He was glorified, and he went set by the right hand of the majesty of God in heaven. So he was raised out of the dust. The dust is the earth. The dust it was his body. He was raised out of that carnal body. He is now spiritual. He is now glorified. He is now exalted. Are you hearing this? Yes. So the poor that was to be raised from the dust is Christ, not you. Hallelujah. Amen. So Charles Charamba got this scripture wrong. He couldn't read it. Area waenda, waenda nengoro yemoto. They danced till next morning, singing that Elijah was carried into heaven by a chariot of fire. That is not a question of interpretation of scripture. It is a question of failure to read the scripture. Chapter two, verse eleven, Second Kings. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that, behold, there uh, appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. The chariot of fire did not take Elijah. It parted Elijah from Elisha. 
and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Mm. Elijah went into heaven by fire, by no. a chariot of fire, no. by a whirlwind. Ah, shakur no tindi e day. Diku vre ma suya kudenga. Diku vre ma ropa fado. Am chasha pe kuwa isa. Wrong. It is not a question of interpretation. Again, it is a problem of inability to read the Bible. Malaga chapter three verse ten. The Bible never said they open windows of heaven and they pour you out blessings for which you shall not find enough room to store. No. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that they may be meat in my house, and prove me now there with, say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. God shall open windows with an S, which means many windows were to be opened by God, they are windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing. Pour you out blessings? No. Blessings? No. no. All these people that are paying tithe today, they are expecting God to give them blessings. And yet God never spoke of blessings. He said, I will pour you out a blessing. One blessing. And that blessing is pronounced in Romans chapter 15 verse 29. Romans chapter 15, verse 29. And I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. If all these people that are paying tithes because of manipulation of Malachi 3, verse 10, if they knew that the blessing was the gospel, I assure you, nobody would be paying tithes by this day. The pastors have lied to them over and over again that blessings were to be poured out. But the blessing was the word of God, according to the Bible. Jawi and Europa Fazi, Shokuramai. Romans chapter 4, verse number 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. That is the blessing. The blessing is forgiveness of sins. Verse number 9. Come at this blessedness. Okay, read verse number 6. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, Verse 7. saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. In case you are still doubting that the blessing is of the gospel that brings salvation, which is forgiveness of sins, let's also open <laughs> Acts chapter 3. Verse 25. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with your fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Verse 26. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his sins. <laughs> That is the blessing. The blessing was never about money. Yes. No, it was never. It was, the blessing has never been about money. <laughs> but the people are bringing money to the pastor every day. The pastor says, prove me that says the God of heaven. Strong man with a loud voice. Whenever I can see, I can see. I can see. But I can see. I can see. Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? So I've given you an example of people who have failed simple ability to read comprehension passage. New Ventures in English, book four. Do I have to say that? I have to say that. 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 I have to Kuverenga. Kuruvaneza. Those are going to change the Jehovah's Witness. 
Hapana pa kambu nzina mwari pupura ine zangu. Kana. Akati pupura ine zangu. Di Jesus Christ. There are no Jehovah's witnesses in the Bible. The witnesses that are in the Bible are witnesses of Jesus Christ. The, the true church should have been called probably Jesus, the witnesses of Jesus Christ. Go and read your Bible from Matthew to Revelation and find out a scripture which says God sent people to witness about himself. And I will open you scriptures today that prove that the one who has witnesses is not Jehovah. It is Jesus Christ. Amen. Chapter 1, verse 8, the book of Acts. And while they looked steadfast towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, You men of Acts God... Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and the uttermost most part of the earth. Did you hear that? Ah. Let's open the book of Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Verse 26. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you fear the God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voice of the prophets which are read every Sabbath day, they fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulchre. But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. Yes. They are witnesses of Jehovah unto the people. No. They are witnesses of Christ because God raised Christ from the dead. And he was seen of those that came, from, came with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. Who are his witnesses unto this day to the people? So they failed to read the Bible. They called themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah does not need witnesses. For what? The revelation is of God. It is given to Jesus Christ to review it and to give it unto his servants that they may publish it to his church. And I am one of those servants. So the problem is not only of people failing to interpret the Bible, to get a meaning of the Bible scriptures. No, people are much more failing to read the Bible. Give and it shall be given unto you a good measure. Press it down, shaken together, running over. The pastor says the verse has ended. Bring your offerings, bring your offerings. It shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And you bring your $10 into the offering baskets. In your sorry, lustful mind, you're imagining angels pressing down billions of $10 notes into containers to send them down to you. Pressed it down, Baba, and Makum. Shaken together, running over. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. Wait there. The pastors have never read this scripture to its end. They end here. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. The scripture ends, it is in two parts. The first part of Luke chapter 6, verse 38, it ends like this. Shall men give into your bosom? Am I right? It is the first part. In other words, it is Luke chapter 6, verse 38, A. Verse 38, B says, For with the same measure that you met, 
without it shall be measured to you again. Yes. yes. So if you want to apply money to this scripture, the way to eat there, if you replace it with money, give and money shall be given unto you. The second part, 38b, will take you into the wilderness of stupidity. Because verse, verse 38b says, for with the same measure that you give, it shall be measured to you again. A dollar for a dollar. Counts a dollar or no one a dollar. The pastors will never read this part to you. Somebody who says I've been liberated this afternoon. Because everybody thought that the verse ends with running over. No, no. Papa, I'm going to go to the other one. I'm going to go to the other one. Pastor. Pastor, I'm going to go to the other one. I'm going to go to the other one. I'm going to go to the other one. The pastor is going to go to the other one. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, glory. Maraka naka. Pastor, I just said, I'm going to go to the other one. I'm going to go to the other one. Usafuko ati mzoa hari kuya, acha papasa mwose yoko kazara. Kutotu wakanyi piru kwa ime mwosua futi. Wakanyi piru kwa zenyi. Nengeri ime mwosu, aa, nda inye piru kwa pasa. Jeso mfunge manye pira ita magaya, karane miwo, maito kono tozona, apana pandee pujuka na apo. Kutuna ingiru zaku zimbate, apara ime nyowani. Yeku pempe zane ima. Akakuzo tiri mara ni simbani yani. Pana kama bonyari mara jimani kizuwa kuinda kana chesa shabati zuo. Chesa shabati zuo rima roti zarot sakatik. The light was there. How were you living in darkness in the presence of this light? Are you not finding this gospel enlightening you to freedom and liberty this afternoon? Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. I'm going to extend my time a little bit because the Lord wanted me to. To touch on this matter concerning Daniel chapter 12, verse number 8 and 9. Because we need to see that the seals are in two dimensions. Who is able to open the book and to loose the seals? So in John chapter 6, verse number 25, Jesus said in the, in, 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 in the scripture to the disciples, all these things I have spoken unto you in Proverbs. And then he goes on to say, The time shall come to pass when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing this? Yes. John chapter 16, verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. Yes. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. Are you hearing this? Yes. So that scripture is very clear. There is nobody who can understand the plain speech of God if Jesus does not want to show you. He uses the words, I shall show you. Which means no one is ever going to discover. Do you see that? Yes. Now, we can also open the book of Matthew chapter number 11. Matthew chapter number 11. No. Matthew chapter 11 is not the right one. Let's open the book of Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 13 verse 16 and 17. Matthew chapter 13 verse 16 and 17. Let's read together that scripture. Together go. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Verse 17 together go. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. You see now, which means for you to be able to see those things or to hear those things, the Lord must open your eyes, open the eyes of the inner man to see those things. Uh, are you hearing this? Yes. So... Let's open the book of Luke. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. I'm going to prove to you through this scripture how that Jesus closed up 
the eyes of certain two men, Clopas and his friend. Verse number 13 to 16. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. Yes. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew, drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden, that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What that, you have, what that men of communication are these that you have one to another, as you walk and are said? Now, can you read verse 16 again? But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. <laughs> Why did they fail to know that they were speaking to Jesus? Their eyes were holden. Who held their eyes? Now, I want to show you how later he decided to open them. Go and read verse number 31. Verse 13, 31. And it came to pass as he said at meet with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Read verse number 45, Luke 24. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. But in verse number uh, 16, the Bible says their eyes were hold, holden, they were held, they were closed, that they should not know him. So the seals are just an allegory that is going to show us that it's not easy for one person to just open the Bible, be able to read it, and then be able to understand it. Because you've gone to school, you are literate, you can read English shona. You speak English very well. You think that it's easy for you to read the Bible that is written in English. I have proved to you this afternoon through the errors that some of the uh, members of the Christian religion, they have made. They read the Bibles, they spend much of their time reading the Bible, and yet they fail to read just simple reading. They compose songs, they say we have been sent by God to praise him. Which God sends you to praise him and does not give you an ability to read the scriptures from which the songs are to be composed. No, no God of heaven is that weakness. So the angel that was strong and loud, he demanded, who is able to open the book and to lose the seals, to lose the seals there of verse number three, Revelation chapter five. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. No man in heaven, on the earth, under the earth, no man was able to open the book or to look on the book. Do you know that the Bible is the most difficult book to read? It is a book that vexes you. You read three scriptures, you are yawning, you want to sleep. Some people actually take the Bible for their sleeping tablet. If they want to sleep quick, they just open the Bible. Abraham was going to the land of uh, Abimelech. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Those of You can read the herald from cover to cover. But it's just one paragraph in the Bible. Ah, uh, It is difficult. To look on the Bible is difficult. You read the scripture and it says, these are the generations of Jesus Christ. Abraham began Isaac. Isaac began Jacob. Jacob began Judah. It is brethren. You are sleeping. <laughs> you ask yourself, where is it necessary? Where is God talking about all Endless list of names, useless names. Judah, we get Paris and Paris. We history. I history Abraham. Judah. 
Marida yangu tuzo ndega toya rivi. Iwe. Chokwa di chiripo deje kuti. The Bible is a sealed book. Yes. As you try to open it, it is sealed. The seven seals message is about a closed and sealed book. So John saw the book that was in the right hand of the one that sat on the throne. A strong angel with a loud voice. He cried aloud, who is able to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man was found in heaven. Not even one of the angels tried. Not even one attempt. No angel said, give me just for a moment. Don't be the book. Now, verse number three in Tanti Baba. In a Takutikana, why you wanna? Who know Tauna need you, Jack and Gros, which is here, Mam Jenny? Who read it? Was a qualification you would tell in New York, Dog Babuka Faro, Dirty Fura. Now we are Gunzaga Simba and Eskovu, Akato in the matter of Seren. Rangu basa ndiri ngote zira. Aripoe rano gona kufura buku. Kwa iwewe. Ini ni kuita zei. Nwa buku wa tikari mate bukiro. Tukuto fuza wei mimi mbine maka mwari na mwari na. Tofa denga na mbaraka tiziro. Maikoro uriku eroku. Nda ita zei. Kana hali ipacha da ira anu kuna kufura. Indi siye ndiri pana. Kwa gabrona mtume ngoni. Why are you praying to angels if they can't help with the book? Why are you looking for angels? Why are you asking that angels should appear to you? What profit do they give to you? They failed. No man in, earth, in heaven, even under the earth. The invitation also went to the underworld. Bla Lucifer Pasapo, Kule Buku Kulo. Karabuchu gola kuira ibu vure, zivaga di bugure. Arimo ko mani. One set on the throne. Ah, uru hara edo. Tika tere bugura kadaro. Tera tera zira kabiri. Tera goro don zira. Karamai koro. Chata kada nem tumbo amosi. Marini macho zipa che na uti. Daranga kavata chele so like this. Ozani ya chele no wazaga. Tum daranga kavata bugua. Tum vam tumbo aga zipa zipuka. Vaga titi ba. Paulo de Paruto Chema, Pai de Raro Golaguia, Cusota de la Zibuku, Calago Visa Zibiso, Quarto de Galaoyata, Gurega, a fascine. A strong angel. Daragan Gureo, so it, Daraji, Bukuripo. So it doesn't matter for how long you have been reading the Bible, it doesn't matter for how long you have been preaching from the Bible. If the grace to understand the interpretation and to read is not granted unto you. You remain an outcast from the courts of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this is why now we are going to understand why John said, I was in the spirit, but the throne was set in heaven. We understand that John was not in heaven even though he was there. This is why it is important for you to understand that he was in, in the spirit. Verse number four, together go. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. What was the problem with the book? There was a qualification. In order for you to open, to lose the seals, you needed to be worthy. The reason why the angels failed to open the book, they were not worthy. The reason why there was no man on earth found worth, it was because there was no worthy person. The invitation was extended to the underworld. No one in the underworld, under the earth, was able to open the book and to lose the seals because nobody was found worthy under the earth. So the question remains, so who is worthy and how does he qualify? Verse number five. And one of the elders saith unto me. There are also elders who are not able. <laughs> elders who are not worthy. Yes. You see, when you go, she didn't wear it. Because you have this. Because you are worthy. But Papa never wear it. 
What did one of the elders say unto you? Weep not. Do not cry. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Clap hands for Jesus. What was the qualification? He prevailed. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Amen. The root of David. What has he done? He has prevailed. He overcame death by rising up from the dead and going up to the right hand of the throne of the majesty of God. That's how Jesus qualified. So as we talk about Jesus dying for our sins, we thank him for that. Jesus blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that were against us. We are thankful for that. Let's not forget that the throne of Calvary, the, the, the cross of Calvary, the cross of Calvary is not just a place of salvation for us. It is a place of qualification. Without the cross of salvation, the cross of Calvary, the seven seals were never going to be taken away. Do you see that? Yes. Now, You remember John chapter 16, verse 25? Yes. Where he says, I have spoken to you in Proverbs, but the time shall come to pass when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I will show you plainly of the Father. The question was, why not now? Have you seen the answer to that question? Yes. Why are you speaking in Proverbs? In other words, why are you concealing the word? Why are you putting seals onto the speeches that are coming out of your mouth? Why can't you just preach unto us in a plain layman's language? The time shall come to pass. What time was that? When I have prevailed. When I have paid for your sins. When I have overcome death. Do you understand that? Yes. So Jesus in his time in the flesh, he spoke to the people in Proverbs. Not only to the disciples, but even to the people that were the multitudes. You can read chapter 13 of the book of Matthew, verse number 33. Jesus gave a parable and says, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto uh, a living with which a woman took and put in three measures of meal until the whole was leavened. And the Bible says, These things said Jesus unto the multitude in Proverbs. And without a parable spake he not unto them that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet saying, I shall open my mouth and speak in parables. I shall speak dark sayings of old which were kept secret from the foundation of the world. So he was quoting Psalm chapter 78 verse number 2. Hallelujah. Amen. So those that met with Jesus in the flesh they were not in a better place than us. They never had an advantage. They spoke to a man of sealed speeches. Because I have two overcome. Because the elder said, the lamb, hallelujah. Amen. The tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book. So Jesus did not only die for your sins, he also died to prevail so that he may open the book. Yes. So when he spoke to them in Luke chapter 24, verse 46, let's read that one. Uh, verse 46, no, verse number 48. And, and are witnesses of these things, verse 49. And behold, I send you the promise of my father upon you, but wait ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endured with the power from on high. Wait. The word detari means wait. Don't preach. Don't, no matter how eager you are to hold the Bible and gather a crowd and start to preach, do not do anything. Wait until you are endured with the power from heaven. The idea was he was to go to heaven, stand before God as the priest for mankind after the order of Melchizedek. If God accepts his offering of his own blood for the atonement for our sins, 
he was going to prevail and declared the author of our eternal salvation. After that, the Holy Spirit was going to come now. Holy Spirit was going to come for what purpose? He was the one who was going to bring the interpretation and the reading, the right reading of the handwriting on the wall. Yes. The reason why Daniel said to, to Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 2, give me some days so that I may go to pray. It was Christ telling the world, I cannot give you the reading of the dream and the interpretation. I need some few days. Let me go to Calvary. Let me die. Let me resurrect from the dead. Let me go back to present myself before God as the lamb for your sins and also as your high priest. And after that, I'll come down in the form of the Holy Spirit and I'll tell you the dream and the interpretation. Do you understand it now? Yes. Are you enjoying the book of Revelation? Yes. We are summarizing the seven seals. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said to them, wait, because I need to prevail. These are the reasons why you should be thanking Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for abolishing the law. Thank you, Jesus, for prevailing so that you may open the book and to loose the seals that I may understand the truth, the interpretation of the scriptures, which is not perverted or manipulated to the people's uh, lustful gains. Hallelujah. Amen. Revelation chapter 5, verse number 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders. Sit down on the throne. This is the one seated on the throne. Sit on oh. the chair. In the midst of the throne, what happened? Stood a lamb as it had been slain. The lamb did not stand up from the right hand of the throne. No. The lamb did not stand up in front of the throne. No. The lamb did not stand up behind the throne. The lamb stood from the center of the throne. throne yes. Which means the one seated on the throne was the lamb. Yes. The lamb did not stand in front of the throne. No. From the center, from the midst of the throne. They were the one seated on the throne. Means somebody. Did you see a man seated on the throne? No. One that sat on the throne. Because what he saw was not a human being, he saw a spirit being. That's why John said, I saw one seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse number seven. And okay, it, let's finish verse number six. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. In chapter four, verse seven, they are called the seven spirits of God. But in chapter five, verse seven, the Bible says, give us chapter, chapter five, verse six. Is verse 6. The Bible says, The lamb had seven eyes and seven horns, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Which means the Holy Spirit is a constituent of Christ. Amen. And Christ is God. The seven eyes of the lamb are the seven spirits of God. The seven horns of the lamb are the seven spirits of God. Okay, verse number eight, verse number seven. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Who wants to be the lamb? Amjada. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David. You are the lamb. Can you stand where the lamb was found standing? <laughs> you are behind the throne. Okay. Okay. Can you get the mic and explain why he's in trouble, this man? Okay. This man seems to be in great trouble. I asked him to stand where the, the, the lamb was found standing by, by John. Yeah, uh, my brother is in great trouble because uh, the lamp was found in the midst, midst of the chair. 
So uh, given the scenario where uh, Pastor Irengu is sitting, you cannot stand uh, right in the midst of uh, Pastor Irengu. You'll be sitting, you'll be standing on Pastor Irengu. Yes, you will be standing on Pastor Irengu. That is his problem. Yes. Thank you, my brother. But before you go to sit down, where was the lamb found? John saw the lamb standing. Where was the lamb standing on? Yes. In the midst of the seat. Now, now, oh, oh, yeah. can you read verse number seven? Read verse number seven. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Where is he coming from? Abamdari, <laughs> can you tell us? Is he not at the center of the throne? Where is he coming from? Uh... I remember we said uh, he was in the spirit. He's coming from where he is. He's coming from the sender. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my brother, give him the mic. Give him the mic. Apparently, he's coming from the one city on the city. Oh, he's coming from the earth. That is where he's coming from. John saw Christ just as he was arriving from earth. After rising from the dead, he ascended to heaven. So let's open Daniel chapter 9. Okay, it's chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels, wheels as burning fire. And a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. And thousand thousands ministered unto him. And ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. And I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. And as, and as concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So this is Jesus after he has conquered, he has prevailed over death. Are we together? Yes. So let's conclude by reading verse number 8 of Revelation chapter 5. And we shall run in a marathon to uh, summarize the six seals. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them abs and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. So that's how chapter 8 is concluded. Chapter 5 is concluded of the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us open chapter 6. Let us open chapter 6. We are not going to read chapter, verse 9 to 14. And when he had opened the fifth seal, chapter I saw, 6 verse 1, and I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals. So these are now the seals that are being opened. And I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on, on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So the first seal is very simple. Now, Pastor Irengui, I want you to take off the first seal, put it down. We are taking off the seven seals now. Now, the first seal is very simple. Uh, 
rider of a white horse. Two, he had a bow. Three, he went on conquering and to conquer. Now, that is the first issue. Physically, John saw Jesus taking away the first issue. But remember, according to Revelation chapter 5, verse 2, the strong angel cried with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to take away the seals? Which means the seals are not physical barriers to the Bible, which may stop a man from opening the pages of the Bible and read what is inside. The problem is not in God banning men from reading the Bible. No. God has no problem with anybody reading the Bible. God is stopping men from, number one, being able to read the verses in the Bible and to have an interpretation of those verses. So the seal is not a physical seal like John saw. No, the seal is in when you open the Bible and you try to understand what John was saying, what Matthew was saying, what Peter was saying. You are able to read. And when I preach like this, you say, but Apostle, I never saw these words that you are saying now. I read this scripture over and over again in my life. But I didn't see that this verse does not end with the words that the pastors were saying. The verse ends with this scripture, like in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Everybody thought that the scripture ends with running over. They don't even know that the scripture is in two parts. 38A and 38B. And even 38A does not end with the words running over. <laughs> but every time people read it, they never saw that the pastor is manipulating the scripture to make you believe that Jesus was talking about money, but he was not talking about money. Because in 38A, it says, Give and it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Comma, shall men give into your bosom. So if you are giving, it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, but not into your wallet, into your bosom. The word bosom, according to John chapter 13, it is your chest. The word chest refers to the heart. The word heart refers to your spirit. So if you give, men shall give you into your spirit. Not into your purse or into your wallet. The verse says, shall men give into your bosom. John lied on the Lord's bosom. He was not lying on the Lord's wallet, no. He was lying on the Lord's chest. So if you are giving and expecting that you shall be given into your purse, you are sadly mistaken. Your problem is not in, in understanding the interpretation. You are not able to read. A simple grammatical ability which a grade four English teacher can give in the Bible matters, the teachers have failed. Economists, doctors, and lawyers are being deceived by people who don't even remember where they last put their grade seven certificates. What is wrong? It is the seals. When I need to agree the medicine, I don't need to go to a pastor as a grade seven certificate. What do I do? Do I go for my pastor? I'm not even sure if I'm going to doctor. Peter is wrong. He's wrong. No, the boots are not going to fit. So I don't define any. I'm not going to pass away. I don't visit the boots. Hallelujah. Amen. If you read Revelation chapter 19 from verse 11, you are going to see Revelation chapter 19 painting a picture of Christ riding a white horse. A lot of scholars have failed to understand that the first seal has got a rider of a white horse. That rider is not Christ. It is the Antichrist. Because he is using a bow. 
A bow is a long range military arsenal. You put a spear into the bow, you draw the cord. The spear flies a great distance to kill somebody who is far off. In the first seal, there is the use of long range preaching platforms to deceive. And what is the bow? The bow is the law of Moses. Now, if you read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible says, you who were afar off. The Gentiles were afar off. Wherefore, remember that you being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, but that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made deny by the blood of Christ. So the Antichrist is using the law to reach out to the Gentiles. Because people who are far off, you can't kill them using a sword. You need a spear that is loaded onto the cord of the bow. You stretch the cord, you release. The spear can fly as far as 100 meters to kill people that are far off. So it is easy to use the law, and when you lose the law, you open a scripture from the precepts of the law, you load it into the testament of the law, you say to the Gentiles, bring your tithes. In Malachi it says, God shall open windows and he will pour you out blessings. You are going to be killed by that bow. That spear without a bow will not be able to kill you. You need a bow. A false gospel loaded into the law is easily acceptable. Because the preacher will say it is written in Deuteronomy. You don't even know that that scripture does not mean what the pastor is saying it means. But because there's loaded this false gospel into the law, the people are going to die. The white horse, white is a color of purity. So the pastor wears white suits or he professes a false righteousness. That's why false preachers do not want to talk about what they used to do before they were saved. Guti, Guti's wife is not his first wife. He lies that his first wife cheated on him. That is not true. They simply had a family problem and he left his wife. He doesn't tell people that he was chased out of the apostolic faith mission. The Zahaja people do not know that Guti is a former AFM congregant. Some few years ago, uh, when Guti introduced the talents heresy, he said God had revealed it to him that if people work talents, they are going to be rich. But at the end of the day, people are not rich because of talents. Guti is rich because of talents. Guti does not mention the man who he started Ayoja with, who is in South Africa. Last year, around April, when he was doing deeper life. He forgot that when he introduced the talents, he said, the Holy Spirit gave him a revelation of talents. I'm forgetting the name of that man. He's running a very successful shrine in South Africa. They were partners until they discommunicated each other from each other because of differences in doctrine. What is his name? I'm forgetting his name. So, Guti last year said, when I went to South Africa, I saw that my friend was being successful using talent. So I copied him and I brought it to you. Five years ago, he said God refused it to him. He had a revelation while he was in prayer. Last year, around March, April, he said, I saw my friend in South Africa. He was doing it. And I copied and I brought it to you. And up to this day, this evening, no one has ever dared to ask Guti, why did you lie to us when you introduced your talents? But Guti opened a scripture 
in Matthew chapter 22, verse number 1 to 14, in which the Lord Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man who was traveling into a far away country. He called his servants and delivered his goods unto them. Unto one he gave five talents, unto another gave two talents, and to another he gave one talent to each man severally according to his ability. And straight away he went into a far away country. Hallelujah. Amen. So good, he said, God is preaching talents using this scripture. Go and work your talents. Hallelujah. Amen. Go and work. It's Matthew chapter 25 from verse, verse 14. It's Matthew chapter 25 from verse number 14. Hallelujah. Amen. To verse number 30. Good, he does not tell the people that in the parable, before the Lord came back to settle the accounts, one who had received five talents from the Lord, said, the Lord, you gave me five. Look, I now have four, five more. I now have ten talents. The Lord said, good, well done, thou faithful servant. Come and enter into the rest of thy Lord. To the one who has given two, he said, the Lord, you gave me two. Look, I have now four. The Lord said, well done, faithful servant. Thou have been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. The one who had received one said, I dug it into the earth, and it was bound hand and feet, and cast out into the outer darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So good, he says, we don't want wicked servants like the one who received one talent from the Lord. Go and work talents, bring money to Zahaja. In the parable, the Lord did not ask for profit without giving the servants capital. Yes. How does good he preach talents to Zahaja congregants? Expecting them to give him money without giving them capital in the first place. <laughs> Good yes. is a liar and a thief. <laughs> but why is he doing that? He's loading his falsehoods into the bar. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read the second seal. Take off the second seal. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that said thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So, the second seal now. Another horse that was red. Red is a color that mimics the color of blood, which means the Antichrist is now saying, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. But when you look at why they are applying the blood of Jesus and for what agenda is the blood of Jesus being called out, it has nothing to do with salvation. It says, power was given to him that sat thereon, the one that sat on the red horse, power was given to him, to take peace from the earth, in that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. The great sword is now the message of prosperity. Peace was taken from the earth. How is peace taken from the earth? When people do not give ear to the message of salvation, grace through faith outside the works of the law. And the people begin to say, blood of Jesus, fire, thunder. Thunder for what? We want to kill our witches and wizards who are stopping us from making money. It is the rider of the red horse. They apply a fake blood of a fake Jesus so that they may find things to satisfy their lustful appetites. So this is a red horse. This is the case. second seal. It has been thrown down. No, throw it somewhere else. I don't want you to put them in the same place. Do you see that the seals are not outside the Bible? They are inside the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because the red horse is a preacher who says, by the blood of Jesus, you must marry your husband. It is a great sword. 
It appears like it's a powerful sermon because the word sword, it is a representative of the word of God. According to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 17, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Are you hearing this? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It is a great sword, but it is a disastrous sword. It takes away peace. People no longer want to hear about a salvation-giving gospel. They want a prosperity-giving gospel. A gospel that ministers to their stomachs. According to Philippians chapter 3 from verse 16, the Bible says their God is their belly. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The second seal. Now, let's all say seal. 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 Do you see why they are seals? Because if you listen to the gospel of prosperity, you are never going to look in the Bible. You are not, never going to take away the seals. You are, going to see, you are not going to see Christ. You are not going to be saved. Yes. The word seal means never give an opportunity to allow something to seep through or to slip through or to peep through. The moment your eyes are darkened with the gospel of prosperity, if you are not written in the book of life, you are never going to understand the word of God. There is a seal. I've already said something that I wanted to say at the end. The seal is no longer on the Bible. The seal is in your heart. The seal is in your spirit. The seal is in your mind. So you open the Bible. Instead of you seeing Jesus, you see U.S. dollars. It is the second seal. The rider of a red horse given a great sword. Now don't forget that the sealed book is in the hands, in the right hand of one that sits on the throne. So the seals are not, they were not put on the book by the devil. No. They are put on the book by God. The rider of the red horse was given a great sword by God to take away peace and to kill the people. So God has allowed the prosperity gospel to darken the hearts of so many of our brothers and sisters in Africa and the rest of the world. Amen. This message I'm giving you this minute, they don't want it. Because at the end of the service, they can't say, I receive to this message. Amen. I receive. They walk away. It is the rider of the red was seal number two. Seal number three. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black was, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. The rider of the black horse, black is a color of evil. Black is a color of sin. So the rider of the black horse is a dangerous rider. It is the same rider, the same one who was riding the white horse, the same one riding the red horse, is the same one riding the black horse. What is ju just changing are his strategies and tactics. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, lest Satan take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Yes. Clear for Jesus. So, the seals are showing us the same person, the Antichrist. But he's coming to attack the people of the earth. He's coming to attack the church using different devices. We are not ignorant of his arsenal, his equipment. Hallelujah. Amen. His weapons of war. The, the color black is a color of evil. Which means God is saying, beware of this third strategy of the Antichrist. The rider is the Antichrist. The black horse is a different strategy. 
This one does not hold a bow in his hand. This one was not given a great sword. This one has got a scale in his hand, a pair of balances in his hand. And what it means is a great sword is less effective than the pair of balances. But what happened? Read further. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say. The voice was not coming from one of the four beasts. It came from the, the, from the midst of the four beasts. And in the midst of the four beasts is the throne of the one that sat on the throne. This is the voice of Christ. What was the voice saying? A measure of wheat for a penny. One measure of wheat for a dinner, for a penny. And three measures of barley for a penny. And three measures of barley for a dinner, for a penny. And see, thou eat not the oil and the wine. Do not offend the oil. Do not offend the wine. One measure of wheat is the law of Moses. Three measures of barley the New Testament gospel scriptures, they balance like that. They are sold for a penny. They are sold for a shekel. They are sold for a dinner. What it means is the gospel of Christ comprises of less of the law and more of grace and faith. The law points us to faith and grace. The law points us to the love of God personified in the person of Christ. Are you hearing this? Amen. So, one measure of, of, of wheat, you go and quote a scripture from the law. Three measures of barley. Explain more what they mean about Christ. The number three in the Bible is a complete power of God. So Christ is the power of God completed in the gospel. So three measures of barley is essentially a message that is centered on Christ. So if you, want, if you get one measure of wheat, open a scripture in the book of Malachi. Open a scripture in the book of Exodus. Open a scripture in the book of Deuteronomy. But do not talk about Moses when you open the books of Moses. Take, take us to Christ, who is the three measures of Bali. But how do I get the three measures of Bali? It is a shekel, it is a penny, it is a grace. It is paid for in full at Calvary through the suffering, the death, and the subsequent resurrection of Christ. Saka pain in good hour wap. In good hour with Saka cheaper, Unacha Uro Tenga. Uruguana Fangerina Christ to Mahar Mutengo Waka Badar Wapai, Bagalva. But who can go change and is a bed to get three measures of wheat, one measure of barley, a pan and shabut, what has the mafuta, what has the wine. The oil is the Holy Spirit. The wine is the blood of Christ. Yes. Do not hate the blood of Christ. Do not hate the ministry of the Holy Spirit. How do I offend the oil and the wine? If you mix up these quantities on the scale, one measure of wheat, the message of this, the scriptures from the law, three measures of barley, a revelation of Christ comes out from the scriptures of the law. Once you do that, you do well. So the rider of the black horse brings a pair of balances. He brings a scale. He gives two measures of wheat, two measures of barley. He offends the wine and the oil. He brings a message that says, Ebenezer, we are in a testament of grace. And he says, bring your tithes, bring your tithes, bring your tithes. You don't understand. Are you not mixing these quantities? I thought it was one measure of wheat and three measures of barley. No, 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 no. Bring your tithes into the house of God so that they may be bread. That says the Lord. They have been affected by a virus from the rider of the third horse, the black horse. Because Ana baba bai peri rino ti kuzaba ba kuna meva ku aika matora vuti ku iti ku yaga mawanza iti ona your father and mother you need an interpretation remember who shall open the book and lose the seals thereof 
There are seals on that law. If you open the seals, take away the seals, open the book, you shall see that you can't teach your child to respect you using that scripture. Unless you have failed to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. So the balance, the pair of balance is the scale. It is there to mix together law and grace. Jesus died for us at Calvary. The law ended at Calvary, but the Sabbath law is still in existence. <laughs> they have offended the wine and the oil. Yes. Rest in peace. They have offended the wine and the oil. Uh, the Bible says women should not wear clothes that are fit for the men. According to Deuteronomy chapter 23, they have offended the oil and the wine. The same Bible says you shall not put on clothes of different colors. Why is your trousers different in color from your shirt? Uh, that law ended the Calvary. It is the rider of the black horse. The third seal is done away. What it means is mixing the message of grace with the message of the law. It is a seal. You never understand Jesus Christ. Remember, these are seals within the Bible pages. But John saw physical seals covering the Bible. But the seals are inside. When you read the Bible, you are going to come across scriptures that seemingly are contradicting one another. I am a jealous God. I punish a generation for the sins of their fathers up to the third and fourth generation. You go to read Ezekiel chapter 8. It says, what is it that I am hearing? That our fathers ate sour, break, sour grapes and our teeth are in pain, are set on edge. The Bible is contradicting itself. The Bible says in that scripture, no more am I going to hear this proverb among you. The soul that sins is the soul that shall die. Eh, what is God doing? Is God confused? No, he's not. It is just a pair of balance. One measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny. That's how you deal with the books of the law and the books of grace. The law only adds a testimony of the coming of Christ that was given to the prophets in the covenant of the testament. But we don't get anything other than the testimony of Christ or the prophecy of Christ from the law. The message of Christ is in the New Testament books, not in the Old Testament books. The Old Testament books, according to Romans 1, verse 1 to 4, it is not a gospel. It is only a promise of the gospel. Yes. Let's hear the third seal. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And this his, one is a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sweat and with their hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So the rider of the pale horse, it is neither white nor black, it is in between. Those are churches which appear to be evil and yet they mention the name of God. Those are the people who say, I'm a believer but I'm a drunkard. The Bible says in Asusararaz. Those are the men who say Solomon had more than 1,000 wives. That's why I'm a polygamous man. They are deceived by the rider of the pale horse. Let's go to the fifth seal. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also, and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. So the fifth seal is a turning point. Those that died ahead of us, the martyrs of the gospel in the early stages of the church, they are under the altar. The reason why they are under the altar, it is because paradise is below heaven, the dwelling place of God, but it is not in heaven. 
That's why they were not, they were not on the altar. They were under the altar. Heaven and the throne of God is what the Bible is calling the altar. Remember in Revelation chapter 4, there is no mentioning of the altar when John sees what was happening in heaven. Are we together? Yes. So there is no altar in heaven. The throne of God is the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, they were asking for judgment. How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and revenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And the white robes were given unto every one of them. The white robes were not given after they complained. The white robes were given before they were killed. The white robe, according to Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8, it is the righteousness of the saints. Yes. The righteousness of the saints is obtainable from the gospel. Yes. So God gave them the gospel before they died. That was what they were given in the meanwhile. And God said unto them that they should rest for a little season unto their fellow servants also in their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. So they say to, to the Lord Jesus Christ, why are you delaying to avenge those that killed Stephen, those that killed Paul, those that killed Peter? And Jesus said, no, there are others who are not yet killed, who are supposed to be killed for the gospel, the same way Stephen was killed. So wait until everyone has been killed. Do you understand the gospel? Yes. Panasta, for what can you take over here? What fun game? And then you know, and pass up. She can't stand the wrong woman. No fun. You know, go fast. We have a set of fun. No one can be rid of. We have a photo of peace of man. According to this sixth seal, fifth seal, the reason why Jesus is not coming, he why is waiting that everyone who has been assigned to play a part in the furtherance of his gospel. They have got to be persecuted the same way the ministers of the early church were persecuted. And then the end shall come. Jesus did not say, wait until your fellow servants have got red carpets rolled for them at the airports. Like Guti was received by a big crowd in Australia some few months ago. No. According to Jesus, the servants of God are killed for him. Not in, invited by the first lady of their countries. No. The true servants are hated by the leaders of the world. Because the leaders of the world are corrupt. They've perverted their parts. And the messengers of God are sent forth to rebuke them. And the people that are in the leadership positions of their nations, they are arrogant, they are proud, they are not humble. They feel that if they are rebuked, they are being challenged. That's why they persecute the servants of God. servant of God. Servant, But what is phenomenal about the fifth seal is that it has nothing to do with the Antichrist. It is the church paying for the blood of those that were used by the devil. Let vengeance fall upon them. God must punish them. That was the fifth seal. Rest for a little while until your fellow servants are killed as you were killed. It is a seal. How is it a seal? How do you liken people are mixing grace and law to the saints who are demanding for justice? The saints who are demanding for judgment. How do you say that call for judgment is a seal? Why is it a seal? Because the world is not going to follow preachers who are controversial and radical in their own terms. They don't want preachers who oppose the world order. They want preachers who go to bed with the leaders of the outside world, the peripheral world. So it is a seal because, because people do not want to be finding themselves at war with the people that are in leadership positions. Because a corrupt world survives on nepotism. It is not about what you know, it is about who you know. 
If you are connected to the minister, to the president, to the vice president, you are better advantaged, you are given a better platform to access the things that the people of the peripheral world are having. You want to stand, you need to be corrupt. You need to have a relationship with some top ZANPF official. So if you find Apostle Chuenga who is rebuking the people for doing things that are not in tandem with the principles set forth in the book of God, people are going to say, we don't want to be in a church where we don't know whether this year the pastor will still be alive by the end of this year. Let's go to a pastor's church where we see the ministers being given the microphones in the church. When the minister walks into the church, the pastor says, Mteko Ateko the honorable has come. Let us stand up and receive the honorable minister. Come forward, minister. Bless us with a few words. And after the minister campaigns for the people in that church to vote for him, he signs a check for a small figure, $5,000. He hands over to the church. The men of God kneels down to pay obeisance to a dead politician. It is a seal. There are people who, come, who want to come to hear this gospel but they are afraid of our politicians. One day the soldiers are going to march into the church and beat everybody to a pub. I don't want to attend such a church. How long, oh God, true and faithful, shalt thou not judge and avenge for our blood? It is a seal. But when that church, you know, I'm going to go to church, 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 these people are murderers. They can't. Because they don't want to be seen at war with the people that are leading our peripheral world. They think God is afraid of men, which is not true. Kuchka. When the politician opens a scripture and misquotes it, you don't see anything wrong in that. It's a seal. You never understand Christ from the scriptures. Yes. You are afraid of evil doers. Seal number six. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth so, seal. Seal number five is a call for judgment. Never forget that. Yes. And lo, there was a great earthquake. And the so, sun. Before we all go into seal number six, seal number five being a call for judgment, you are also going to see that. Judgment is a message that people are also afraid of. That's why there are no pastors who preach about judgment day. They say don't threaten people by telling them that Jesus is going to judge the wicked and put them into the lake of fire. They say you are not preaching, you are threatening them. But Jesus preached the judgment. Not even in one chapter in the four gospels did Jesus preach without mentioning judgment day. And because of the days of judgment or the day of judgment and the day of his last coming, it is also a seal because a lot of people have been deceived because so many pastors and prophets have given false prophecies about the deaths of the last coming of Christ. Charles Russell gave a false prophecy that Christ was going to come in 1914. The Jehovah's Witness is popular the most popular church for giving false prophecies about the coming of Christ. 1955, they said Christ was coming. 1975, they said Christ was coming. 2000, the year 2000, the Jehovah's Witness also lied that Jesus was coming and he has never come. Because in Matthew chapter 24, verse 1 to 3, Jesus said, be careful, let men, not no men deceive you. For so many false people shall come saying I am Christ, deceiving many people. So the cry for judgment that was done by the saints in the fifth seal is also a seal in that so many people are going to give false messages concerning judgment in the last day of our coming of Christ. 
Alleluia. Amen. Sixth seal. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of the heaven of heaven fell unto the earth, even as fig trees, as a fig tree casteth the untimely figs, when she is shaken for off of a mighty wind. Yes. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So the sixth seal is a message that warns people of the judgment day. Judgment day does not happen in the sixth seal, Baba Mzimba. The sixth seal is simply a warning of judgment day. The mountains, the stars are going to fall away. The heaven is going to be rolled away as a scroll. And kings and men shall hide themselves in dens and in caves. Hallelujah. Amen. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? The sixth seal is a message that warns, be warned one day this world is going to come to an abrupt halt, a great standstill. Everything is going to be stopped Cars are going to be idling. They are not going to move. They are going to, re they are going to resist. motor is to drive. a robot. network it is a seal. It is a seal because many people do not believe that this world is going to end. They love this world so much that they are in denial. Wagam bona mu na ndam zika na ba zika na wageni zenza. Ano ngani wale ma fira rose wa ko apana shiri ba. Daka mu na nezura ina windi pano ba pasto ba. Jai tu kwa shanga itai si anana rose. Ah, you Ona pea we na agada kwa no groba zenza dzipere chauri kuiti kwa vana mari chikora hapana wadi kusiana ne murume wakatsvaga basa hamwe acharega amai aka aka kura acharega wana hudiki saka uri kuroverwa zera ne murume wako auzi kuonyere kuti hauna kuzvara hauna kurorwa kwa dai wapera mwanangu mumbere garotora ne mwana mzikana akarorwa shaya dza dzindikira zvugunwe Nekurikitwane Muruma aga pua maso chaga abi ako uro zogo aga shumba manzai kurova muka zikuchka kuno face ane ba rume unzare pesa di pawa kana rimuruma ta orwe muka zi ubo amri kana churwa muka zuri rombe let us stand up. So the conclusion of the matter is. The seals are not outside the Bible. 
The seals are inside the Bible. There are people who open scriptures and they, are, they manipulate those scriptures to deceive. And when people talk about judgment, the coming of the last day, they also lie. They say a lot of things. The Jehovah's Witness do not believe that there is a heaven to go to. They believe that we are already in heaven. They believe that God is going to come down and live with the saints perpetually on earth. I don't know how they reconcile such scriptures like this one and the other one in Revelation chapter 20 which says, the earth shall run away from the presence of God. They are talking about the last day, but in contempt of what God has said about the last day, it is a seal. You fail to understand Christ because you are, your eyes are darkened by an imagination. Why are people running away from what God said about the last day of judgment? And they begin to formulate their own theories about the last day. Why? It is a seal. The seal is a false message. But we are going to see that the seventh seal is different from the six seals. You are going to see that. And do you know that the seventh seal is the longest of them all? It consists of so many chapters, the seventh seal. And if I don't tell you, you are never going to see where the seventh seal ends in the book of Revelation. No? Chapter 22, 23, verse 7. This year. No? The seven angels and the seven trumpets. Those are the seven seals. Now, to conclude this matter, let's go back to chapter 5 of the book of Revelation. That's how we are going to conclude it. Chapter 5, verse number 7. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. So the lamb came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Did you, know, did you see what he did? He took the book from the hand of God. What did he do with the book? And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb. Go to chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals. Who opened one of the seals? The lamb. Who opened the seals? The lamb. It is the lamb. So he gave the book that he had opened to Holy Spirit. To come and preach to people that dwell in the earth. And only a minister of the gospel who has been endued with the Holy Spirit can teach you the true gospel, the proper message. Only a proper minister of the gospel. Because the Holy Spirit is the only one who bears record. Remember 1 John chapter 5 from verse 6? Yes. And Jesus, that's why he calls himself in Revelation chapter 2, the true and faithful witness. Because he witnesses from what is in the book. So I want to conclude this message by showing you something that is very important. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 says, The revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him, that he should show it unto his servants. Things which must shortly come to pass. Go back to chapter 1. And he sent and signified it by his angel and his servant John. So what we are in right now, we are in chapter 6. And in chapter 6, verse 1, the Lord opened the book and he took away the first seal. And I saw when the Lord lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, and one of the four beasts saying, come and see. So, which came first now? Revelation chapter 6 or Revelation chapter 1 verse 1? 
the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him, that he might show it unto his servants. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. In Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, when he had opened the first seal, which starts first. Chakatanga kuiti kane ship. Chon nakatanga kupua revelation yere. Yezwa kaiti kai shaji fura zimizo. Kwa tije sakatanga visa zimizo. No sora nza joni zwa akanga hita. Chi chakatanga. My brother. You want to make an attempt? Chakatanga <laughs> revelation 6 verse 1. Let's clap hands for him. Yes. John saw something that had happened already. Because John, when he was at the Isle of Patmos, it didn't happen the day that Jesus went up to heaven soon after he had resurrected. No. The seals were removed from the book, from the foundation of the world, in the mind of God. But in the course of the chronos time, it happened when Jesus rose from the dead. Remember in John 20 when he said to Mary, Touch me not, for I am not yet, I'm not yet ascended I'm to, unto my Father and to my God. He was going to heaven to appear after having prevailed over death and our sins. That's how in John chapter 5, the scripture says, the voice said, the lamp, I saw a lamp coming out of the midst of the throne. And the, 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 one of the 24 elders said, do not cry. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals. So Jesus said to die, to rise from the dead, to appear before God, and then to open the book and to loose the seals. Some years after it had happened, John went to the Isle of Patmos. And in the spirit, he was showed things that happened before he was born. Things happened after Christ had risen from the dead and things that are going to happen when Christ comes to judge the world. Remember in Revelation chapter 12, he saw the devil rising up against God and Michael, the archangel, fighting him and he was cast down with one, of the, one third of the angels of, the, of, the, of heaven which were now demons and he became the devil. What he saw in Revelation chapter 12 is something that happened before Genesis chapter 1. Yes. So Revelation chapter Revelation is a book that is not written in chronological order. You have got to learn it from the preacher for you to understand between Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5, which came first. Revelation chapter 4, he heard a voice saying unto him, Come up. And in the spirit, he saw a window opening, a door opening, and he went up into heaven. He went up into the spirit. And he saw a throne being set. But in chapter 5, there was the issue of the opening of the seals, which happened first between Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5. Which happened first, Baba? Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5 happened before Revelation chapter 4. And in Revelation chapter 12, he saw a woman who was pregnant, just about to give birth. And the serpent was waiting to devour the child as soon as he was born. But the son, the woman, gave birth to a son and he was caught up into heaven. Ah! Give us verse number two. Verse number three. Okay. And there appeared another one in heaven, behold a great and red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour a child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And the child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Who was this child? Jesus. Being caught up to God is rising up. He ascended up to God after he rose from the dead. So between Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 12, which came first. Remember Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, John is given, uh, is seen, is being asked to write letters to the angels of the church, seven churches. The seven churches are the churches of the Gentiles, which Apostle Paul preached unto. Apparently Apostle Paul was converted in Acts chapter 9. Jesus ascended to heaven in John chapter 21. 
in, in, in Acts chapter 1. In Mark chapter 16. So the question is, the churches of the Gentiles that the letters are sent to or written to in Revelation chapter 3, chapter 23, they were established after, after Acts chapter 9. But in Revelation chapter 12, Jesus was going back to heaven after having accomplished his assignment to save us. So which came first between Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 to 6, and Revelation chapter 2 and 3, which came first? Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 to 6, and Revelation chapter 2 and 3. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 up to 6, Chakatanga. Revelation chapter 12 happened before Revelation chapter 2 and 3. <laughs> Revelation chapter 12, Iripamberi, per Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. Revelation chapter 5, Iripamberi, per Revelation chapter 4. Kureva kuti chapter 5 ndo yakatanga kuitika. Pozo itika chapter 4. <laughs> so you cannot say, I want to read the whole Bible in this month. I will start by reading Revelation chapter 1 and I will read it up to Revelation chapter 22. You are doing nothing. You are simply in great vexations. So this is a synopsis of the first six seals. Tomorrow we are not going to start on the seventh seal. We are going to lay a foundation on the seventh seal by preaching from Revelation chapter 7. I advise you to read Revelation chapter 7 tonight so that tomorrow when we touch Revelation chapter 7 tomorrow, you will be able to understand what happened in chapter 7. But let's not forget that chapter 5 the fifth seal and the sixth seal is a call for judgment day. So the sixth seal is essentially a preparation for judgment day. And a synopsis also of things that have happened and that shall happen on judgment day. So this is important. This is a summary of the seven seals, seal number one to seal number six we are going to introduce Revelation chapter 7. It doesn't talk about the seventh seal. The seventh seal in is, is in Revelation chapter 8. Siri, she know me. She seems to know me. A cheese by Revelation 7. She by Revelation 8. We are going in Revelation chapter 7. But chapter 6, in opera, seal number 5, ne seal number 6. Seal number 5, a chain, right? It's a good to move to the Europe. I Tijifira fangiri yenye. Ishoti mbo zororai. Dakamira rime gengare nyuri. Bae wese jamaka itwa. Siu number six. Pa wapatanga kuset kwa mood ye judgment. Pa judgment. Pa chaitika ezu. Pa judgment. Pa chaitika ezu. Vanu wacha inda uno wanda mapako. Vanu wacha chaka rufu wacha rishaiwa. Sese zo chitawaru wezo zo. Aizati ya itika judgment. Parungu otoru wazo. Chaitika kana ya kwa itika judgment ya ju. Saka siu number seven. Ito wakuno pinza wano mu judgment day. Siu number six. I mood ye judgment day. You will map with judgment, which I decay. But between seal number six and seal number seven, final revelation chapter seven. Yes. You know what Taura was dream? So, what do you call a woman? I can Waka missing way. Polite it. Siva Europare to Kunika. Taka Dindi wa Fangeri. And Demon of Pisavan. She can't see Bomirai. Pa chapter six, Bagans. I can't see Bomirai. Panamango in Fanyakufa. But pa chapter seven, Panachu called Dre Chaijo Chaijo. Chawaka misirwa, wakanga wati tangira kubatarufu, wakano mirira wamwe kuparadiso. Doka wakadana kunaisha, wakati murimu chene uye murimu yosho kwadi. Pati chitiwa Europa rataka beiruwa, tika, tika, tika deura. Shuka nzimbo mira hae. Pa waka nzimbo mira hae hapa. Doka notu sita manji. Pa Revelation chapter, chapter 7. Saka nori munu nune nungo ze kuwele nga manji. Ujawa na uti the seven seals jia kuneza. Hallelujah. Amen. Saka shatari pisateka mire pana. Pasiri pano. Waka itu kwa shaka itu kwa Daniel. Aka tindamere nga sana. Ndakunzukisa. Shukanzuro wa pasi. 
Saka wasipo pana apa, wapo ni utipane shwa wata jizayo, wanjiro wapazi. <laughs> Usambo, ufo waka fungo, utipane chume chino kutazi, saka kuzi kwa shoko, chino pfura kuzi rova ipazi. Every time ya uno pesale shoko, ule wa zingu, patuno zingu wa shaka change ila, unofonye ila wana tete, kunzi ndara, wara zisinga ite, uya undi one, ufo wati wano ufandi sina kufaona, dakumbo siya shi, je masiu za aposto, masiu zito za wana patiski. Abone wa zingwa. Tanyi raka taa, anda unzukisisa. Di pei ndi nzukise kuzi. Wanda anzwa. Patu kutishunurewe andina. Di tsana ngure. Shuka nzizu. Shaka varwa. Famba. Ine wakop god. Ulewe reka pepe. Reka wapu watazwa zukisa. Oti wari. Di pei ndi nzukise. Ofu wa zeta kujofa. Ule wa nzuro wa pasi. Shaka varwa. So our greatest, our greatest testimony tonight is that the Lord has given us the book on which the seals are taken away. Why has he given it to us? Chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ that was given unto him by God that he should show it unto his servants. That he should show it unto his servants. That is the theme scripture for this assignment. Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. Amen. All things are delivered unto me by my Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing this? Yes. No man knows the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father but the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. If the son does not want to reveal, he will be told to go. Move! Famba! Apostle, a party face in the good Famba! Chaka Varu, I've seen Chaka. Usambo, Fanga, Fanga, with the punish, you know, that sounds with such no fool, I couldn't Famba. Gona could give Saka Kuta, Wagans Vamba. Apostle message, the angels in Zwa, but with this Zranga and Akumba, Zonti Tiza, Wagans Vamba, Urukugoya Zago, but they all got us to get out of Boz in Nan. Ogona Kunzuisa Fangiri, which you could net Wagans Vamba, Unoya Zago was a tender. Hova Fanimka Zaga or was as in a spirit. Ungo tender. Ugaona usina shibere kunoro rerwe. Unofuna kugaraweka. Kunoro kwakungo tandara. Hakuna munana unokuitisa nhumbu usina shibere. Hazviti. If our gospel is hid, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3, it is hidden unto them that are lost, to whom the God of this world is blinded. Hallelujah. Amen. The minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You are lost. You have been blinded by the God of this world, and God has allowed it to happen. Yes. Move. 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 But you can zero. You can move. Famba. In the Kumasoe. You can do it. 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 You Atina shi simpi so, shaka fara moyo yedu. Tino ona mwana koma na shi, duzi liwa pachena. Shiro she witi, shekeri. Shiro shi tatu shepari, shekeri. Hatita zire umu waini, hatita zire mafuta. Tiri mufangiri, haka tukwa suka. Ino terati za kristu, mwana koma na wa mngari. Bukura katoro, wa maoko, ma mngari. Rikabatu kwa na kristu. Doku vavura, 
kwa kutanga kuratiza Johani. Isunazi taku ziza, ziri duziru wana moya mchene. Pane shakaratizi kwa Johani, akatapu wa duziru. Johani akaratizi kwa, anakupu wa duziru. Isutapu wa duziru, hachina kuratizi. Shaka fatamu ngari iso. Yes. Maka inzi kwa duziru, Johani ana uduziru. Aingo nyora. Ushia sana tu kumbere pana juu ya shaka ngano juu ya kazi iwe ishia shinyo ruwezi move enda kuna imenia akadu kwenye ndugu kwa shaji Daniel ripu tu kanzi shaji Daniel tu kuhuku ita pana iiche tu sahi nyo re iyo ya na kumbere nyo ra tu fatisi na kumbere ziba ati mbere zaru ni wa ira mbere yoruwa kati pana zile shaka nyo ro tu kubata zina kuta yoruwa zina kuyoruwa shaka yoruwa tashipenda waka bata pana biri so you must be proud. That I am not like everybody holding on to their Bible. I am totally different. On my Bible, there are no seals. My Bible is not closed. It is open. I am not only able to understand, but much more important, I am able to read yes. and interpret. You can't get an interpretation if you can't read. The Lord has given us both abilities. Remember in the morning message, we shall eat bread continually from his table. Thank you, Jesus, for this message. Thank you, Jesus, for taking away the seals and opening the book and looking upon it. We know there was no man who was found worthy in heaven, either on this earth or also in the, uh, in the underworld, who was found worthy to open the book and to lose the seals. But you were found worthy because you have prevailed over sin, you have prevailed over death. Thank you, Jesus, for you are the man with, in whose hands is the book. You took away the book from one that sat on the throne, and you are revealing it unto us. You are the only faithful witness through Holy Spirit that guides us into the truth of God. Everyone has been blinded. Everyone has been deceived. Everyone has been darkened their understanding. They are dull of hearing. They can't understand the mysteries of heaven because of the Antichrist, the rider of the white horse, the rider of the black horse, the rider of the red horse, the rider of the pale horse. Thank you, Jesus, for you have enabled the, 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 the plan of salvation to wait until some things are accomplished so that you may come and judge the world. If you had judged this world a thousand years ago, we were never going to find salvation. You have given us a room that we may find some place to hear the true message of your suffering. Those that cried unto you that you were to judge the earth, you didn't listen to their request. You gave them white robes and you said that they were to wait for a little while until their fellow servants are martyred for your gospel, are facing tribulations and persecutions for your gospel so that you may come and judge the world. Chino kutenda ijesu. Neguti mune mwe mwrefu. Neguda kwa chene venyu. Vakanyi ruwa mpuke upenyu. Vamunuda kuhunza. Kushikira shaitwa. Nyika isku guma. Makati mpuke ya methi 24 verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. Thank you for giving us this impetus. We worship you in your wonderful name. Amen. Clap hands for Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. Anybody who says I have been blessed by this message. Okay. Are there any announcements, teacher? Our service tomorrow is starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. So, brace yourself and come early. Don't miss out. Let's go quickly so that we may arrive home safely. Make sure that you greet a person or two. If there's somebody who has been pricked in their heart by this message, who feels that they need to come to salvation, don't leave this auditorium before you come to Jesus. If you want to repent, come forward so that Christ may receive you unto himself. If there's somebody who has not yet been born again, walk towards this podium, walk towards this pulpit. The Lord is waiting to receive you. Otherwise, our service ends now. Greet a few people before you leave and ask them not to miss tomorrow's services.